Hello everyone, welcome back to Ask a Scientist Gaming, where we combine mediocre gameplay with expert science. I'm Ken Hansen, Associate Professor in the Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry. I care a lot about photons hitting materials and then doing various things with that photon energy, from chemical transformations to solar cells to photomechanics to whatever it might be. But more importantly, joining me today is uh, Julianne Brasso. Julianne, if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself. I'm Julianne Grasso. I'm an assistant professor, brand new assistant professor here at FSU in music theory. And my main area of interest is actually video game music. So not really a scientist, but let's just pretend <laughs> a little bit. You know, I, I like that you're an expert at music theory. Which yeah, is theory. Yeah. There's foundational knowledge. There's, there's stuff there. <laughs> no, we're, we're very excited to have you. What do you usually teach? What are your classes? Um, t like typically, um, some sort of like right now I'm teaching a graduate class on instrumental forms. We're doing like Mozart, Beethoven sonatas, things like this. I'm also teaching a video game music course. Um, hoping some of those students pop on tonight. So did, did that course <laughs> exist before you arrived or that no. was, that's what you were given when you, <laughs> yeah, when you yeah. chose to do that one as your like graduate. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. really fun. Mm -hmm. All right. Equally important. What game are we starting with? Final Fantasy 2. But really, Final Fantasy IV, um, <laughs> confusingly released as Final Fantasy II in North America uh, because the real Final Fantasy II and III from Japan were not released. But Final Fantasy I was... Anyway, it's really Final Fantasy IV. But yeah. this is for the Super Nintendo. Um, and I like the original version. The original um, like translation the and the localization is really good interesting and fun <laughs> so, original as in the japanese release or the the nor so the original um, like North english okay. translations okay. are that's what this should be are, are classic so yeah and the music's the same <laughs> awesome yeah all right well it is should probably get the right system. controller <laughs> yeah we have a barrage I'm of really controllers debbie tonight. over here yes it's gonna work out all right we'll give you a little bit of time to settle in before bombarding you speaking of bombarding that's what's about to happen in this opening scene. This opening cinematic from the Super Nintendo it was very dramatic uh, <laughs> for its time. Uh. This is the first Final Fantasy game. It's one of the first Super Nintendo games that was released. Mm. So it's doing a lot of work aesthetically um, that you couldn't really have on the NES. Yeah. Just moving up 8-bit to 16-bit. This just broke people's minds. This really did. Oh. Look at this, the way it like turns sepia, like colors. <laughs> this is a flashback. Like you couldn't really do that on the NES. So we're getting a real kind of narrative immersion here. <laughs> Especially with these, this really good dialogue. And a video game what? music class. How many students do you have in that? I have 14. Oh, that's, um, that's I mean, the, the cap was 12. Yeah. Um, but basically, anyone that was a senior, I tried to let in because I don't know when this is going to be taught again. Yeah. So this I don't know if this is like a. Majors majors. Yeah. That, yeah. That's really fun. But I'd like to teach, um, like, anyone, even folks who don't do music, like a general video game music course would be great. Mm hmm. And if you could get that to meet one of the like university requirements, you'd have thousands of students if you wanted, right? <laughs> I don't know if I want thousands. Yeah. I need a few TAs for that yeah. in that case. Giant lectures were just playing video games on a giant screen poorly for <laughs> an hour and 15 audience. minutes twice a week. <laughs> oh, that's the plan tonight <laughs> for an audience. Oh, I like it. So. I guess I have a fun fact about this um, this game yeah. from the beginning that I just re recalled. The reason that I I played this, this was my first video games I ever played, and my sis older sister had one. There was like a raffle at school, and that's where we got this game. We had a Super Nintendo, but we had more of the kind of Super Mario. Mm -hmm. um, what other games we had? Some other games. Uh, but no, like, RPGs. Um, and this this whole opening kind of thing, it's really, you're just, I'm not actually fighting. I'm just, like, pressing A to kind of read through. This is a very long opening. Mm -hmm. And my sister was like, this is really boring. <laughs> 
And so me and my my cousins who were more closer to my age and um, at the time, we were like, let's we'll we'll play it. We'll it was sort of like a, a sibling defiance moment of like, you think this is boring? Where we're we're gonna beat it. Mm -hmm. And we found it really fun, really difficult. It's actually really not difficult, but we were very young. <laughs> yeah. Well, there was no like YouTube tutorials. There was no right. few walkthroughs other than ASCII art. It was, right. It was a different time. There was a different time. <laughs> I did. We did not have the internet. Yeah. We had um, just yeah, like uh, I had. I didn't know anyone except like my two cousins that knew this game. Like no one in school did. Also, like. In the 90s, it was still, video games was still such a boy thing. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have any, like, friends, like, girlfriends that were playing with video games. Or maybe they did and we just didn't tell each other because it was just such, such not a girl thing to yeah. do. So this was like, you know, here's the, now we're in the throne room. This was All game. of these people are evil, spoiler alert. Also, no, this is your gateway <laughs> drug into video gaming. So yeah, yeah this game of all games. <laughs> really got me in this like this game that is so minimally interactive in this beginning part yeah i was learning all sorts of new words there's so many <laughs> role-playing game words you know that yeah my liege <laughs> yeah like what is that it's my vocabulary I yeah like yeah Re reese's pieces requested a factoid so yeah retro oh, there you go. Yeah, so, there cheers we go. reese's pieces welcome back <laughs> thank, thank you. you for joining us <laughs> throw your questions in chat we will get to them i'm happy to I guess we'll start with uh, just the broad question. Yeah. The, the, the path that led you to where you are today. You had a gateway drug into video gaming mm. with Final Fantasy IV, and then ultimately you transitioned to making this a profession, which is kind of crazy. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so it I'm is. genuinely curious how that, that path unfolded. Yeah, so I... Oh, no. So I got fired from my post. Sorry. <laughs> <That's> not me. <laughs> no, I'm conflating. It's, it's so immersive. <laughs> Um, the dramatic music came on. Yeah. Um, so I, I was always like a, like a, a music kid, you know, I played in band and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, but I going to college, um, and I always played video games. Right. So then going to college, I was like, well, um, maybe I can do something that's like audio engineering because music doesn't make any money mm -hmm. can't be a music major so i'll do computer science mm -hmm. and maybe i'll get into audio engineering and maybe i'll work in like media like like uh, video games eventually um i was so bad at computer science <laughs> so bad at it i mean you know co college like i was a freshman i didn't know what i was doing i was just bad i was bad at college for a while and then and then I kind of was taking music classes and was like, oh yeah, no, maybe I should just, oh wait, it's interactive now. I can walk around. Um, maybe I should uh, take some music classes and maybe this should be my major. And then I took psychology classes and I'm like, ooh, I love psychology. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. And I took neuroscience classes after that like a, and taking bio classes. And I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna be a neuroscientist. <laughs> And then, <laughs> um, and, I, and I wanted to do, I was interested in like music therapy and things like this, like music in the brain, mm -hmm. like I'll do that. And then I don't know what happened. Oh, I do know <laughs> what, I do know what happened. Okay, so at uh, my undergrad, I think I go down, my undergrad at Princeton, you had to, it wasn't just an honors requirement, every student and every major had to write a senior, a junior independent project and a senior thesis like a full-on project mm -hmm. um and i had no idea what i was gonna do uh, i did not not really know my major i was a music major with like a psych slash neuro minor slash i don't maybe i was pre-med at that point i had no idea what i was doing and i just started procrastinating the best way i know how which is playing video games <laughs> And um, I was like, you know what? I don't know if anyone talks about video game music. Like, there's a lot of cool things going on. There's cool themes. In fact, it was actually Final Fantasy VI that I ended up writing about for my first um, part of my junior project and then Final Fantasy IV later. 
and really analyzing the way the themes kind of come in and out and what that means, not just in the story of the game, but like, what does it mean when you're playing and you're hearing this? And how does that affect how you're understanding this interactive environment? It's like a little different. It's, it's kind of like how film music is analyzed, but with that interactive component. Mm -hmm. So I started that and I was really, I had like good advisors that were just like, yeah, I don't know what you're doing, but fine, just do it. <laughs> and they, what are they going to do, fail you? <laughs> <laughs> like, we just need her to leave. Um, they gave me money to um, buy, what do I have to do? I have to, oh yeah, I have to go see Rosa and, and Sid and everybody. Anyway, they gave me money to buy some, I was like, mm -hmm. oh, I, I need to write about, what was I writing about? Oh, for my senior thesis, I was writing about the entire Final Fantasy series and the entire Zelda series. It was mm -hmm. too much. But um, here's my moment in the stairwell. Um, so eventually, um, so I bought all these games <laughs> for, for my research. And I was like, wow, that, I can't believe they just let me do this. I just like <laughs> went on Amazon and bought. I had, I had to buy an NES because my mom had given away her old NES. So I bought a new one, yeah. <laughs> a new one at that point. Um, wait, I don't want to go here. Um, not yet. And, um, there we go. There's Sid. Uh, I, so I wrote about, I wrote this really long senior thesis, like 150 pages. It's almost like, that's just too much for an undergrad, but I was obsessed. I was like, I just can't stop talking about this. And then I graduated and was like, well, I'm not going to do anything with that. <laughs> So I got like a real job. So I'm like consistently resistant to like whatever this video game stuff is. And then after working in at nonprofits and education for a little bit, I thought I'm gonna, you know what? I kind of miss um, like research. And you know what? I feel like there there's still a lot to be said about video game music. And I feel like I wanna do more than just my senior thesis. And so mm -hmm. that's what I did. I went back to grad school. I went to University of Chicago where no one was doing it there. But they're just like, yeah, sure. Fine, cool, do what you want. They were really nice. <laughs> I mean, but you had a formal advisor. You had to talk into like taking you under mm -hmm. their wing and saying, I have a crazy idea. <laughs> yes, yes. And like they were gung ho, basically. All right. Um, even though they did they did music theory, but they did a very different they mostly like um like vocal music and like classic like classical music. Yeah. Um and uh yeah, and so then I, I, I even when I was in grad school, this is the fa so uh, this this track that's playing now is the famous theme of love. It's actually I have another fun fact for later, but no one has someone has to request it about <laughs> Somebody this. Somebody request a fact. Hurry <laughs> up, Reese's Pieces. I know you have points built up. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's drink or factoid. Those are your two options essentially. There it is. Okay. Critical <laughs> Nina <laughs> request a factoid. This particular track, which is kind of operating on a sort of circle of fifths progression it's it's also a melodically descending like it has a nice melodically descending line it has really interesting intervals it's very simple though it's you actually been used in japan in elementary schools as, in music education huh. um this particular track how's the volume for the music if you guys want it louder let me know i can turn it up seems like it's okay but we'll see let me know the real Cecil I know would never whimper like this. Yeah. Um, anyway, you were in grad school. I was in you grad school. I did it. This. I did the. I did the dissertation. I still didn't think I was. Maybe I won't do a dissertation on video game music because people were still saying, "Yeah, you should have like a legit interest in music, and then maybe do video games as a side thing." Because you you eventually want to get a job. <laughs> um, it's fair. And. And it was from people that like really meant well and were and were of like an older generation where it really was much harder to convince somewhat conservative music institutions to consider even things like jazz as real music. Turn up the volume just a little bit. There we go. 60. Which is yeah. like obscene to me that you wouldn't consider like jazz and popular music as like something worthy of study. Yeah. Um, especially in music theory. I mean, but like studying music in movies and things like that, that's been known for a long time. 
it, like that's well that was that was like basically video games but 20 years earlier i think okay. in the sort of the 80s a lot of film music studies started to sort of take off i see um, but it was very much felt with a lot of resistance it kind of so yeah. in some places it still is it's like that's still not that's still just a fun elective and not a real um thing so this moment in this game right now we're waiting for this like crawl there we go thus the dark knight cecil we finally um finished our exposition and i remember <laughs> playing this game and, I, and as a kid i had no sense of scale for how long an rpg would be i yeah. thought we were maybe at the end of the game at this point <laughs> i thought that like, my exploration of the castle was totally it and i'm like is this the credits it's really not the credits um <laughs> Extremely not, and like these kinds of um, these kinds of games really expanded what what you what you could imagine as like the world of a game because this this can take you 20, 30, 40, 50, depending on what you do with it. So many hours. Yeah. So you want to guess what the speed run record on this game is? Um. Oh yeah, I have no idea. Like, cause I don't know. I don't really know what are the good like hacks for this game to like get toward to the end. Mm -hmm. Um, one hour. It's two hours and twenty minutes. Okay, so okay. It's still heavily involved. It's still like a like long scream, game. Like, I mean, there's still still probably twenty minutes of optimization in that somewhere. But yeah, yeah. yeah. Two hours and twenty minutes. <laughs> so if it was over now, you have the world record. But <laughs> <laughs> one of these days. All right. So grad school, you were still debating whether this was the career you wanted. Yeah. At some point, you committed to a thesis. I topic. did commit commit to a, a video game music thesis. <laughs> topic in grad school eventually and I was like you know what if I don't get a job I just want to do sort of do what I love mm -hmm. and if I have to sort of force myself into a box that's a, a completely different topic of, of some research area then it's like not worth it and I'll just do something else mm -hmm. I was I, I admit I was very lucky I had funding um, in grad school so I'm you know I had I went to a well-respected institution where my um, advisor was well known. So, like, I had a certain amount of privilege and clout, you know, behind a somewhat risky project. So, um, now we're gonna get into. There's our battle. Here's our battle music. Strike first. Um, oh, Jack. Classic. Here we go. This is the height. Of action, turn-based <laughs> <laughs> combat games. <laughs> um, oh, and I, I have another fun fact about battle in this game. Um, for anyone later who has points. But so I, yeah, I kind of went for it, and I was lucky to meet um, several mentors and several folks, and kind of develop a community of folks who are in grad school and also just left grad school and even undergrads and 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 sort of younger scholars who were doing video game music and, and helping to kind of make it feel, or kind of put it on the map. Yeah, yeah. add some legitimacy. Some add some legi mass. legitimacy, but I still had quite a bit of resistance on the job market yeah. um, at a lot of different places. Uh, but this year, FSU <laughs> took a up, chance. Took a chance, yeah. <laughs> we'll see how it pans out. Yeah. Um, but you know, they knew they knew my whole deal going in. Yeah. Um, I didn't I didn't market myself as a Beethoven scholar, and now I'm coming and playing Final Fantasy <laughs> <laughs> on stream. No worries, I was not hired to do anything close to this. So <laughs> you're in good company right now. Oh, there now. we go. Perfect. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a photo chemist by day, but <laughs> video games and streaming by night. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Critical Ninja followed up by requesting a factoid since oh, you okay. dropped a knowledge bomb on him with this. Okay. Um. So. If you go on Google Patents, you can actually like look up Final Fantasy IV, and there's a patent patent for what is called Active Time Battle. This was the first game to introduce. It's not exactly turn-based combat, mm -hmm. but essentially turn-based combat that is um, constantly taking in different variables into a, into account between the stats of your of your um, enemy and the stats of your your party mm -hmm. so and you can just always kind of go in and kind of look at what those are um in your in your party which is up to actually up to five people in this game hmm. um again drawing on sort of tabletop role-playing games of your um but making them video games and um 
So drawing on all of that and whatever status effects are happening in, in battle and having different battle timings happen according to those, um, those kind of parameters. So it was a brand new technology. So this yeah. is really introducing something new to gaming at this point uh, that we, I think, pretty much take for granted. I mean, that, was, that was their effort to randomize. Like, to make this definitely a lot more interesting, yeah. 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 Like if I it less predictive and less, yeah, less deterministic. So Final Fantasy three before this, mm -hmm. you would you would have your party of say four people, and you would say, okay, you're gonna fight, you're gonna jump, you're gonna do magic, and you would do it all at the end. You kind of lock it in, and then it would just happen. Um, and then the and then the so this one you kind of have it as like there's a there's timing based, and so there's a little bit. There's even um, where's the menu again? uh custom yeah battle speed like you can change things um to make it easier on yourself <laughs> it's fun um and i part of that fun fact is i used that in a um, paper about music actually and i kind of argued that the sort of it's kind of a weird music theory argument but i was arguing that the way that the music like, for instance, the music in this cave is sort of whimsical. It's like in three, it's almost dance-like in a certain way. This is supposed to be sort of a misty, mm. dark <laughs> situation. Yeah. It's supposed to be kind of like a labyrinth. It's pretty easy because... Um, did I not really not get that other treasure chest? I'm not paying attention. Um, no it's supposed to be hard to get through, right? Um, it's supposed to be mysterious. And so it's kind of creating this sort of affective world. Whereas battle music is just like upbeat and supposed to be a little bit intense. Um, it's supposed to, even though like if you're really just looking at the way battle works, it's just menus. You're just looking at text and you're yeah. just sort of like, all right, we're waiting for this to happen. Yeah. I'll, well, I'll make Kane jump since he's a dragoon. Um, but the battle is trying to shape this experience to be more like maybe an actual active battle. So sort of arguing that there's something about um, music that is helping to create what they're sort of looking for out of active time battle, that patent and everything, which is something slightly more realistic than, <laughs> than the typical turn base one. I really just need to go get that treasure chest. I can't believe I just missed that. Now we're gonna, I'm gonna run away. <laughs> Um, All right, we got a bunch of questions to catch up on. All so right, let's, yeah. Let's drop those on uh, before I get into those. Cuddle Puppy, try posting a link. I turned off the restriction on Nightbot, and you're a VIP, so you should be able to, but behave. I don't want to deal with any random links. Uh, MB5K, uh, Roser1029, thank you for the follow. Thank you for joining us. If you guys have questions, throw them in chat. We are going to be happy to answer them. We will catch up with them as we immerse in Final Fantasy IV. Yeah, um, I messed up. So there's there's Going two questions way. that are related. Cuddle Puppy said, which Final Fantasy game has the best soundtrack for you? And also from Reddit, a stranger with candy, candy wanted to know, why Final Fantasy IV and not Final Fantasy VI, which has the best soundtrack of any Final Fantasy game? Agree or disagree? Um, so the, I always say that the hardest, the most difficult question ever is, is what's your favorite game? What's your favorite soundtrack? Who has yeah. the best soundtrack? Um, even if it's very specific, like which Final Fantasy, even if you ask me what's my favorite track from this particular game, I couldn't tell you. Um, it depends on my mood. Um, <laughs> today I am feeling a fondness toward Final Fantasy IV. If you listen to Final Fantasy IV's music, a lot of it is quite wonderful. Um, there's not that much of it, though. Final Fantasy VI, so we're kind of skipping Final Fantasy V, um, which was released in North America as Final Fantasy III, so it did come after this. I did have it as a kid. Um, I was obsessed with it, um, along with this game. came out, I think, in 94, so a few years after this. And um, it had characters with like their own themes, and those themes were so de developed so richly throughout the game. It has its own opera in the middle of the game. Like it's so musically wonderful, and there's so many. Um, here we go. There's so many um, uh, reasons 
to talk about Final Fantasy VI. And mm-hmm. there's actually a lot of, if you kind of look up on Google Scholar, a lot of people have talked about it in a very academic sense. Um, the reason I like to talk about Final Fantasy IV is a few reasons. One, it's a lot simpler than Final Fantasy VI. So if you're trying to talk about some basic role-playing game, like 90s role-playing games things, like the emergence of active time battle, mm-hmm. the way that music comes in and out in certain certain towns, like town music, and um, the kind of emergence of a certain way that sprite cinematography kind of came about, which is much simpler in this game. It's actually kind of, for like academic purposes and demonstrative purposes, it's a lot easier. It's a lot easier for me to tell, to show it to an audience that has no idea what video games even are yeah. um, to kind of understand it. I tend to rely on like Super Mario for that kind of thing because even an, an ignorant audience about video games has seen Super Mario. Yeah. Um, here's a dramatic moment. <laughs> so there's no official answer, but right now as you play, <laughs> of drinking alcohol, it's Final Fantasy IV. Yeah. So, <laughs> go with that. so um, I uh, so it's a good it's a good kind of it's a good demonstrative game. Um, Final Fantasy VI is great. Final Fantasy V is great for that matter. Um, and yeah, I mean the reason like I also this was one of my first games, and there's like a big nostalgia reason. Yeah. And it's sort of like you could. There's probably 12 other people streaming Final Fantasy VI right now. <laughs> <That's fair. laughs> you could look at <laughs> if you want to go. Um, but I'm happy to chat. I mean, I am happy to chat about that game all the time. Yeah. I should. I should um, just post my office hours. Like, if you want to come by and you're you're a local, just come on in. Well, well, Gohaku <laughs> had a great suggestion. Doctor Grasso reacts to video game music YouTube channel. I. I <laughs> oh no, I messed up. Um, now I'm just reacting to myself being bad at this game. And that's not a bad uh, idea. Perry. Okay. Ex- experts so, <laughs> reacting to things is a popular genre on YouTube. Well, I do have a. I do um, with three other Ludo musicologists, which is people who study music and games, on Thursday nights at um, eight to ten Eastern. Uh, we have a Ludo musicology stream. I think it's linked in my description. Oh, I'll put it in chat. Yeah, and we talk about music. We, we're currently playing, we're finishing up Undertale, um, actually for charity. Um, and we talk about music, we talk about, we kind of ramble about life too, and we, we just welcome anybody who, who pops into chat. Um, yeah, there's the link. Bardic Knowledge. Bardic Knowledge, Bardic yeah. as in pertaining to Bard, musical Bard. Yeah. Is that where it came from? Uh-huh. So speaking of which, Ludo Musicology, that's a relatively new term. Yeah. Who, who, who coined that? And when did that? Ooh. I had to look up the Latin root on that. So Ludo means to play. <laughs> and mm-hmm. To play It means, it, indeed, it means play. Um, it was kind of... Uh, there was a kind of almost trollish blog post um, by a former student, Guillaume LaRoche, back in like I don't know, 2007 or something like that. Mm-hmm. And he was writing for his undergraduate work, he was writing about video games, and he was trying to think of the silliest word that he could <laughs> like, as a, like, almost like a search and an op- engine optimization thing mm-hmm. um, for his work. And he was like, well, you know, we in academia, you just add like Latin roots to things. Um, and <laughs> that's what he did, Ludo Musicology. Because mm-hmm. musicology is the study of music, the Ludo Musicology sort of adding on to that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also, almost sim- simultaneously, Roger Mosley, who was at actually at University of Chicago, is at Cornell now, was writing a lot about not just music and video games, but music and play, like even in, in classical music and thinking about things like the keyboard as and, and even like a controller as something similar in like human evolution and human civilization as mm-hmm. like m- tools for play, whether it's music or video games or music and video games. And he also was using the term Ludo musicology. So it kind of stuck. I have like a kind of love hate relationship with it. Yeah. Um, I think, I think it is a silly word, but now I'm kind of like, you know what? We need more silliness in academia, like at all, especially music academia, which can be so serious, but it's just like, we're not science. Yeah. (laughs) So, yeah.
No, that's that's fair. You guys have a different reputation problem than scientists do. Like we have our ivory tower, you have your stuffiness and like like a different opera. Ivory. And, yeah, exactly. I know. The, 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 yeah, yeah. No, that's 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 really intriguing. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, did you do what reacts to video games? Tempted by a YouTube channel or? <laughs> <laughs> I actually wrote um, an article. Well, a chapter in a in a book, the Oxford Handbook of Public Music Theory, and it was about YouTube music theory on YouTube actually. Mm -hmm. And I wrote it with the YouTuber Twelve Tone, who is a, a prominent like music theory YouTuber. Um, and we kind of looked at the history of of YouTube and music music theory, more specifically analysis, and we were finding that um, even though YouTube has a kind of promise of like it's 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 free it sort of democratizes knowledge in a lot of ways i mean a lot of um early kind of edutainment kind of youtube was science based mm -hmm. and then music theory youtube kind of grew out of this tradition um and uh so we were finding that so we we're kind of looking at the history but also finding that even though there's a lot of benefits to youtube um there's still like the algorithm, which yeah. changes all the time. Yeah. And there's some aspects of the kind of way that you can kind of make videos flashy and and interesting and like algorithmically yeah. sort of pop awesome. up makes it sometimes there's misinformation or in music in, in music theory it's less of a misinformation thing, although there is sometimes just literally wrong analysis, but um, more of like who we think about who are the creators that are being promoted the most they yeah. tend to be a kind of a particular age a particular race a particular gender a particular mm -hmm. um american like north american yeah. um so and there's a time limit bias there's a stylistic oh, so bias many and, things yeah, yeah. like and just like the way people speak like yeah. all kinds of things and so they they have their own issues and because there there was sort of a a little bit of a a conflict that happened at a conference a few years ago with academics versus YouTubers in the music space. Mm -hmm. um, and I kind of was in the middle of it a little bit. Um, <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I mean, the, uh, the internet's such a fickle, weird thing. So my, my group has like a YouTube channel, right? And so for yeah. every, every paper we publish, my students do a five minute video abstract. So they'll do like a PowerPoint and describe it. Mm -hmm. And I also have some of my lectures that go up there. So I have one lecture on transient absorption spectroscopy came out about a year ago and it's uh, basically shine light on things and then watch how the color changes over time and do yeah. that really really fast yeah and it has 8,000 views which is awesome for a science video yeah but we also have a 30 second clip where we pop balloons with a laser that has 30,000 <laughs> yeah so, like, yeah my most right? polished lecture cannot compete with popping balloons not. with a laser of course so, not <laughs> take That's that amazing. for what it's worth <laughs> yeah I mean but if and, you want to learn about transient absorption, check out the video. <laughs> if you want to learn about popping balloons, the, check out the, the video. The balloons are the gateway. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know? yeah, just check out the other videos. Mm -hmm. They're much longer. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Yeah. Oh, uh, I like it. Yeah, yeah. So it was like a fun kind of collaboration because, you know, talking with a YouTuber and they, a lot of YouTubers are have amazing analyses, music analyses on YouTube that, I would happily cite like in my own analyses, like it's not like they're not good, um, but there uh, can be those kinds of issues that can happen. And you also can't create a curriculum that, you know, that is sort of built. I mean, you can, but there's so much of um, more of that kind of freedom, I guess, for better or for worse, for the for the viewer to kind of do whatever they want, and they don't necessarily have to do homework and things like this. And um, I think it's useful for like the YouTube world and the TikTok world now too, like and and academia to kind of constantly be learning from each other, to constantly be doing things like this, you know, um, more public facing, mm -hmm. um, broader facing things to kind of. Um, have these collaborations uh, and not be so ivory tower ish, but right, also right. for YouTubers to also be like, you know, see what we are doing. Because some YouTubers yeah. were like, academics are evil and also very well paid. I'm like, wait, <laughs> <laughs> you are sorely misinformed. <laughs> like, <wait a> <laughs> um, like we're sort of like these rich, yeah. um, like just Elitist. like barons yeah. in the. <laughs> 
<laughs> so I'm like, wait a minute. Uh, but um, yeah, all the misconceptions and just trying to bring these communities together where we're just trying to share knowledge and be like, it, it's with music. We're just, we're really just like fan fanning out about music. Like really, what are we doing here? So. So I've, there's one YouTuber that I've I stumbled upon that I really I, I like musicals like we travel to New York mm -hmm. much several have you ever heard of Sideways does a breakdown yeah. of like musicals and like mm -hmm. well, here's why Cats is garbage and here's <laughs> yeah. why but not not the original play the 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 live action movie <laughs> Cats Ooh. and it was yeah and like here's why the you know live action Mulan didn't work as well it's because they weren't using the music effect any does a really great job breaking it down for the mm -hmm. layman yeah and i don't know how legitimate it is but it to me it sounds amazing because it's <laughs> and this is one of the reasons i'm genuinely excited to have you on stream it's like most of my guests i kind of know what they do right yeah, now. i've yeah. taken physics i've taken biology but mm -hmm. you work in a domain that like i live in this space of music and video games but i can't formalize the language anyway like yeah. you could right yeah. so i experience it but not on a academic level so yeah yeah i appreciate that lens you bring to this I yeah really um, all right, uh, other questions. Uh, Reese's Pieces, I recall hearing about uh, the video game industry having some interest in procedurally generated music. Has that taken off or is that still somewhat new? There's... Is that like AI generated? What is what is the... So, sort of like, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm a little bit... Remember when I said I was bad at computer science? Mm -hmm. So whatever I say here, take with a grain of salt. I'm a little bit stupid <laughs> about implementation. Um, there's only so much I can kind of speak to. Um, but a lot of procedurally generated music is such that um, anytime you're in an area or something, there's a little bit of randomness kind of implemented there. And there might be different, they call them stems often, or, or different channels of sound mm -hmm. that might come in and out based on maybe some certain like pseudo random aspects. Or, or some of it is just, some of it is kind of linked to certain conditions in the game. Um, but otherwise, sometimes it's kind of like just kind of random. Um, we just in our video game music class just did the game Proteus, which I don't know if anyone's heard of. This came out about 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and the, its whole thing was the whole thing was procedurally generated. The sound, the world, like every time you played and it was like an exploratory game hmm. every time you played. Um, it was kind of a new world. I mean, there was some consistencies, uh, but you might see different animals or see, and they all had different kinds of sounds that would kind of come out and it wasn't the same every time. And so there's still, even in games that are more kind of linear narrative, have particular music associated with particular things, there might be aspects of it, maybe in more ambient areas um, that, are, that are maybe more procedurally generated, but I'll, uh, it's not, wide like super widespread i would say not with the big kind of major games i think that's still kind of a kind of experimental at this point and more and a lot, a lot of sort of music like composers and like art installations and things like that are you doing that kind of stuff i mean that's a fundamental problem in video game design right like how linear do you make it versus how open world and how do you guide a story mm -hmm. if it's too open world and then compounding yeah. that with music and composing mm -hmm. i mean so that's I, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I would argue it's easier to compose for a movie which has a linear line that always stays the same, whereas video games, you have, it's responsive, right? It has to react yeah. to you, and like, you walk in the room, how quickly does the boss music elevate? Right. I mean, is is that, do you argue that's harder? I, I guess you don't have to take a hard stand. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I, I, as someone who has composed in my life, but doesn't, have like an indus real industry experience. I mean, I've had I've composed some for some academic situations, but mm -hmm. um, I I can't really say much about difficulty. But I can kind of, yeah, I can kind of speak to there is the 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 interactive nature of it, and the fact that you kind of have to, as a composer, as any sort of game designer who's thinking about implementing music in any way, thinking about. Um, well, if we're in this town, you know, as I am right now, mm -hmm. and this town music is happening over and over and over again, I could sit here and I could be like six-year-old me who was reading very slowly and hearing this music for a long <laughs> time, you know? Repeat, yep. <laughs> on, on, on loop so much. And that was such a big... Um, 
not just a problem, but like a kind of a space of possibility, I think, for these early composers who had these constraints, the technological constraints, like the fact that you couldn't do real sound, like real yeah. instruments, um, and had to have a lot of synthesized sound, um, and not a lot of space for a lot of different sounds. So the, these sort of tight loops are happening. So they're thinking of ways of like, how do you kind of make it maybe melodic and, and memorable, but not too annoying, not too grating. Yeah. Um, and you can't really account for every single instance of play. Like eventually, I mean, everyone has muted games and everyone mm -hmm. has maybe put on their own music instead of playing a game. I have, even though I very highly respect video game music, like obviously, um, but that to me is still a particular interaction with music. Like what does it mean to kind of redesign the space with your own music or mute it. Like, how does that change play? Like, what be, are you not getting from the game without the music anymore? So, yeah. I, I would be very intrigued by that psychology stuff. Like, oh, yeah. Two, two different groups control plays with music and then the other one has muted and like, how does that affect your experience? I don't know how you quantify yeah. that, but I mean. Me neither. I mean, there are, there are a bunch of studies. Um, there's this one that I was reading with great interest and then I realized it was funded by like parents against video games <laughs> something like this Sounds legit. <laughs> I was like wait because it was sort of saying that the group that was listening to music um I think there were three groups I think it was I might be completely misrepresenting this but I think it was the music in, in the game it was like Zelda or something was the, the the video game music was there and then they added different music and then they had no music and they said that the video game music that was like the legit composed music made um players feel more immersed like they they had a survey report mm. um so they sort of self-reported that they felt more immersed or they um they felt more into the game and they were like so this is the this is the source of video game addiction <laughs> <laughs> that, music. that is quite a leap. Like I, 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 I believe the original <laughs> premise: the immersion matters if it's. So there's some the play. But, <laughs> Yeah. Like, yeah. So that was a that was a interesting one. Um, yeah. Uh, all right, we're 40 minutes in. We should do a prediction. Which one do you want to start with? Like, this is the, the we'll just, history one. I think that one. Yeah, be let's good. start with that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, are you guys ready for a prediction? Gotta touch the fire. All right. All right. We're gonna give two minutes for this prediction. For those of you that aren't following us, click the follow button. Get your 300 standard internet units that you can gamble on these <laughs> questions. Uh, normally on Twitch channels, typically this is to predict outcomes in games. We don't do that here. Instead, we do it to questions from our guests' expertise, questions they want to ask you and get your opinion on the answer. There is a right or wrong answer to all these questions, so we do want to know what your uh, what your uh, prediction actually is. And so we're gonna throw this prediction up right now. You guys have two minutes to answer the question. What was the first game with continuous background music? Or when was the first game with continuous background music? Was it before 1980 or after 1980? So if I'm rem remembering my timeline, NES came out in 1985, I believe, or 84 in Japan and 85 in the US. Yeah, it depends on. Um, so this would have been, 1980 is pre, I mean, that's Atari, that's, yeah, that's the the early early systems. the early times early times so yeah before once. my time <laughs> <laughs> true. i was born in 82 so it is right. that's that's uh I'm technically a millennial actually like top end you're a uh, yeah you're an exennial yeah, yeah. <laughs> above that 1980 mark yeah so what is your guys prediction was it before 1980 or after 1980 the first game with music um, and yes, these points have no value outside of this channel, and you can make us, you know, <laughs> drink alcohol or request a factoid. Speaking of which, what are we drinking tonight? We are drinking <laughs> ranch water. Wait, where's the camera? There we go. Um, literally called ranch it's water. It's called ranch water. It is not, as my Midwestern friends thought, a, like, water from ranch dressing that just, like, wasn't mixed right. <laughs> I promise you. And it is not also, like, weird like bilge water from yeah. like a ramp but it is it is like a it is a spiced like Sour hard seltzer, seltzer yeah. um out of out of texas i was a visiting professor at university of texas at austin wow well, i'm doing bad here <laughs> university of texas at austin um for two years and this is where i discovered ranch water and i find it to be superior to uh what is sort of like the 
So like, yeah. Going right for the hard seltzer, like the most popular hard seltzer. I already forget like what it is. White claws. White claws. Uh, yeah, like yeah. you know, I was a white claw person. Everything then, I can imagine that would be described as ranch water sounds unappetizing. I know. I know. <laughs> like, Cuddle puppy, give it a try. It's actually good. So there's, and it, there's this several one's spicy. flavors. It's spicy, so it has hab- <laughs> jalapeno, jalapeno agave. Yeah, and it's just like there's a really a, mild. Like it's. Prickly it's, pear, um, there's a standard, there's a grapefruit. Yeah, grapefruit, prickly pear. All right, so it's closed Spicy. now. Everyone did their prediction. Would you have guessed that? <laughs> 99 to 1. Oh, they nice. Good. So yeah. What is the answer? It's before 1980? Yeah, it's it's Space Invaders in 1978. Although, there's it's a little bit of a trick. It's not really a trick. Um, Space Invaders has like a continuous descending line like a and it's there's sort of a debate whether um i don't have anything to cure myself as a sort of debate whether um the man it's really hard to play yeah, no. <laughs> part of the fun it's like oh no i'm dying um <laughs> there's a debate whether um I know i didn't put i didn't do anything like good in this game i'm talking about <laughs> See, they're judging my feel <laughs> Your, your discussion of music theory, like, it's hard. I'm telling you I'm bad at this. I'm bad at this even if I'm focusing. Um, anyway, uh, what was I saying? Ranch water. No, it wasn't about ranch water. It was about uh, the, the history of the oh, first one. Yeah, Space music. Invaders. So, space um, invaders so some the... people think, so there's like, there's there's a word for, um, and this is come out, comes out of film music and actually like stage music, um, diegetic versus non-diegetic <laughs> music. I know what those are from yeah. Sideways, actually. Oh, there yeah. you go. There you go. That's awesome. <laughs> um, diegetic meaning music or sound that is presumably like in the environment heard by the characters, like maybe if they're playing a banjo or something, that's diegetic music and sound. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas like the kind of score, the background yeah. music, the underscore um, is non-diegetic. Mm-hmm. Um, and so there's sort of a debate whether the kind of uh, the marching sound, the weird kind of marching sound from Space Invaders is diegetic but it's also in space isn't it Mm. so i don't know anything about science but i just feel like there's not a lot of sound out there (laughs) so i'm gonna say it's a non-diegetic and it is the first instance of continuous music and sound in and that's 1978. yeah that's really fun yeah um so congratulations to everyone that said before 1980 you got 1.01 to one payout (laughs) <laughs> I'm sorry. Because everyone I need said to yes. Pick better game. Cuddle puppy, congratulations on the dark horse bet. You didn't win, but if you had one, it would have been a 78 to one payout. So it's worth betting the uh, the 10 internet points. So is there like a definitive uh, volume or book with the history of sound and music and gaming? So actually, the first um, one that is a kind of academic approach is called Game Sound. And it's called like a history of of music and sound and games, I think, by Karen Collins. It came out in 2008, so it's no longer kind Mm -hmm. of accurate for it's because it kind of goes up to like modern games at that point. Um, But who's the author you said? Karen Collins. And then she also had another book that came out that's a little bit more. It gets into some some uh, more theory stuff, but that one gives you a good history. Um, and I, I like that one, and I've used that in class and stuff like that. It's fun. All right, there's a link for Amazon. We are not sponsored, but Twitch is Amazon, so <laughs> we'll, we'll throw the link in there. Yeah. One left in stock. Somebody better hurry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna add this to my wish list. It might be in the library too. Um, like if you're at FSU, it might be in the library. And if it's not, I'm gonna make them buy it. <laughs> I mean, it's worth having. I mean, if this is the definitive, so like, if I had to guess, the first game to implement sound was probably Pong. Like, yeah, that's it, usually that's usually the one that they they point to. Yeah. Um, it's like the first game. It's one of the first real video games. Yeah. So, and it had sound. So. And originally, it was on an oscilloscope where you couldn't hear anything, right? It was just the visuals. But then, when they implemented the hard console, mm-hmm. then it just escalated from there, which is pretty amazing. Yeah. Sleep in the end. Cuddle puppy is demanding. You sleep no, but you end. have to. I don't think you've re, you. I don't think you come to life if you if you're dead. I think you have to. 
you have to cure, you have to do a phoenix down or whatever, they, they call it life, yeah, um, before you sleep in the inn in this game, but I might be wrong, I forget, um, it does, hmm, it de also depends on, there's like seven versions of this game, and a lot of them change some of the mechanics, so I don't remember, uh, I could have tested it, but I didn't. All right, go Haku, and I can hear you on want your opinion on video game soundtracks. <laughs> I'd like to know what she thinks about Fortnite music. Seems lazy using commercial music. <laughs> I mean, Grand Theft Auto did the same, right? It, but it's the radio, so it's, it's diagenic, right? So mm -hmm. it's, it's, mm -hmm. I, I don't know about Fortnite. Are they listening to headphones or? <laughs> Fortnite is interesting, and unfortunately, I don't really have too much of a of a Fortnite kind of experience. I'm trying to think of who has if there's academic work on it yet. I know people are working on things like Fortnite. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if it, I would call it lazy to use sort of commercially licensed music. Um, I, I, I tend to appreciate like a full score, but I think it's, um, there was an interesting article um, by Neil Lerner uh, in, a, in, I forget what, what book it was. I don't, I think it was a book, not a, a journal. Um, but he was writing about how the origins of video game music kind of mimic the origins of film music when film sound, when it, when there was silent film, and all you could kind of do was have text on the screen, but then like a piano player or an organ player in the room to kind of give you like the, the feeling of fear and love and like sadness and happiness and these kinds of things. Um, because of the limits of technology and then so video games kind of started out this way too I mean we had sound effects pretty early on But then once continuous music started happening a lot of it was like well We have to account for the fact that these graphics aren't that good and we just have text and we don't have voice acting mm -hmm. So what do we do? We have continuous music and so for better and for worse, even though we maybe don't need continuous music anymore, we kept it in film and we kept it in video games. And a lot of video games are starting to kind of experiment with not having a kind of film score or maybe having some ambient music, but some stuff that's just sound effects or... Um, I know there was like a big backlash with Zelda Breath of the Wild for kind of getting rid of that big kind of heroic theme that plays all the time in favor of more sound effects and light music. Um, and so stuff that's using licensed music or things in a, in a way that's enhancing the gameplay in a different way, I think that's still interesting. But I know I love a, I love a fully fleshed out like orchestral score, of course, that's my it's my thing. <laughs> <laughs> Cuddle puppies from casual shit talk. I'm sure there's a lot of academic work on Fortnite but done by elementary schoolers. <laughs> I did, Harsh. I, I, did Harsh. I did call it a child's game one time. I, I used to call Minecraft a child Minecraft a child's game until I realized my students had like I was starting to age su such that my adult students were still playing Minecraft. I'm yeah. like, "Oh wow, no." It's oh, no longer a child's game. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. They've made full computers in there, And also, yeah, there's like all kinds of... It's actually super interesting. Percussion, I mean, piano, I, I still so. like to call it that because I just want to troll everybody. But, yeah, yeah. Um, um, now, now you're the old person <laughs> waving their fist at the clouds. <laughs> How dare you bring this into my academic circle of integrity. <laughs> Heathens. <laughs> I've had quite a few game. students write about Minecraft music. Yeah. Even though you think it's like just sort of ambient and not doing that much. There's a lot to write about. <laughs> um, so, yeah. No, oh, that's awesome. All right. The other question was about Undertale. Are you familiar Ooh, yeah. With? I mean, so do you... Uh, I've uh, played Just it. a question about your, your gameplay habits. I mean, do you do this professionally? You get a game for both entertainment and academic reasons? Like, is, it, is there a boundary between those two for you? I am really good at having that boundary yeah. I f i've found because a lot of people ask like oh it's that must not be fun anymore i'm like hell no <laughs> <laughs> um and the, i think the reason is that a lot of my academic work comes after i've played a game and then start to realize wait that was kind of interesting so i'm usually going into a game for fun not really necessarily saying oh this is going to be um academic in any sort of way mm -hmm. um very rarely i am kind of working on a i am working on a piece on the game celeste if anyone knows that game oh, that's fun um and i actually haven't beaten it yet so this is like the first time I'm, I'm approaching a game kind of academically sort of going in 
because I find it very difficult, so I haven't beaten it yet. <laughs> I mean, um, so, so is is the rule you have to beat it before you can publish? My personal rule is, That's awesome. but no one's checking, right? <laughs> yeah, so like, a reviewer is going to call you out. Like, <laughs> she hadn't beat the game. I, I did <laughs> not publish. I did make on my dissertation committee someone from a different department who does know video games, on, like to check me on any of my bullshit, um, <laughs> because my music professors were just like, "Yeah, say whatever you want." Like I could have made up an entire video game that just fit my theories perfectly, <laughs> and it would have been fine. Speaking of which. If, if you're willing, include me as an external member on any of your committees. I will be happy to be involved. The outsider looking in, I will ask <laughs> the most absurdly basic questions, which end up usually being the hardest if they can't summarize and It's true, that. though. Like, it's, it's great to have an outside person just generally, I think. Yeah, yeah. It's really valuable. You have to break it down. I mean, it's mandatory in our department to have an external oh, good. Uh, thesis member. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> it's, chat is just going to turn into a list of games and how you feel about that. How do I feel? <laughs> Why is Mega Man music Mega Man 2 for me so good? <laughs> so good. I can hum the Woodman stage. Mega Man is another one of those like gaps in my academic knowledge. I'd never played Mega Man, although I've like heard Mega Man music and like have played a little bit in my old age, but never played it before. But the music is so good. I mean, a lot of it is that, especially these Japanese composers, um, uh, and this sort of cadre of Japanese composers were very influenced by um, a lot of uh, rock, metal, prog rock especially. Um, a lot of them, like we're talking about nostalgia so much, and a lot of them were sort of born in the 50s and have a particular sort of nostalgia around classic rock and prog rock that they grew up with and use that in their compositions. So a lot of also like role-playing games, um, certain, certain platformers are using music that the composers just sort of grew up with in in a certain kind of way um and like so a lot of it is kind of these passion projects from these composers and i i feel like that's often why it's so good i mean there's a lot of music that doesn't hit as well for people but some of it's also i think uh the way it meshes with the game too like the game's gotta feel good there's actually a book called game feel sort of like mouth feel um by steve swink Steven Swink, I believe. Um, it's really interesting, does not talk about music, and I sort of want to write an article about music and game feel at some point, but he's talking about like when a game just feels right and it's really designed so that you kind of automatically kind of know what to do, feels good in the hands, like it's not just about the controller, but sort of like what the environment is giving you to interact with and like how if you press a button and you jump a certain height, like you really, there's a lot that goes into designing that to feel right and good. Um, and I think music has a lot to do with that too. And like good music plays into a good game feel. Mm -hmm. I think Mega Man has a real good game feel. <laughs> Reese's Pieces, uh, quoting me. Yeah, this research is interesting, but what's your PPM <laughs> Super Mario speedrun? <laughs> University rep on next PhD offense. I'm on like I'm on like 30 PhD committees and I ask that every single time. <laughs> Believe it or not, Reese's pieces you predicted. <laughs> Regardless. Oh, you're doing mass spec to find islets and <laughs> diabetes. Oh, what's your Mario speedrun? You gotta have a good work life play balance. You but know? but the honest answer is NARC speedrun, because that's what we do on Ask a Scientist Gaming. <laughs> mm. Alright, we're one hour in. Alright. Um, we should probably do another prediction also do you want to change games or do you want to keep going on this it is totally up whatever to you. i can leave it to the vote of um who what I, if people want to move on to an another game so the next game i'm going to advocate for journey just because that's not right. a common one we've done yeah but, um Take a drink i mean one of yeah reese's pieces cheers thank you for joining us on a wednesday night uh drinking some ranch water which is delicious <laughs> despite, <laughs> despite what, the, what the sound of the game of the drink is but yeah, yeah. Che cheers reese's pieces thank you for joining us yeah all right which prediction do you want to do next oh um we could do we could do just the next one the mobile game question all right let's do that Fun. All right, we're going to do another prediction. If you're not following us, click the follow button. Get your 300 standard internet units. You are on Ask a Scientist Gaming honor code. You can't look up the answer to this. You have to do it from your knowledge that you have in front of you in your brain. Um, do not search for the answer. 
We'll start the prediction right now. The question is, what percent of video game revenue comes from mobile games? I mean, there's console games, there's computer games, there's mobile games. What percentage of revenue, total market value, comes from um, mobile games? Globally. So this is uh, cell phone, presumably limited to more than 50%, less than 50%. Put your predictions in there now. Globally is a good qualifier. I, I imagine that varies dramatically per country. Mm-hmm. All games I mean, are mobile. <laughs> I mean, speaking back to the like, like respect for the field of video games and music, like video games surpassed both like the music industry and the movie industry in the early 2000s in terms of total revenue globally, in terms of hours watched and played, and like it. I, I don't. You have to see the writing on the wall when you see those numbers. Mm -hmm. At some point, it is a respected genre. Yeah. It's a huge media thing, industry, that deserves to be studied <laughs> by not just, like, you know, business people, you know. I mean, what so so who's, uh, do you go for funding to support this? I mean, who, who, what agencies would you pursue? How do you... No, not really a lot of external funding, yeah. um, per particularly in the humanities at all. Mm -hmm. um, but, and there tends to be not a lot of... Um, I have, I'm always looking for like, if is there an agency that would support like a, the humanistic study of like yeah. the sort of the more cultural side of video games and like some of some of them do, but music is also a hard sell. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know why you would talk about music kind of by itself, um, because I mean we don't really get ourselves out there that well. A lot of um, music that you take in, in school is either performance, which is one thing, mm -hmm. um, or it's like a music, like one music theory class where you're learning like chord progressions maybe, and like that's it, but there's no sort of payout for that. Like why would you learn that? And it's like Beethoven and it's nothing else. Um, so there's not a lot of sort of, the sort of pedagogical teaching side of music theory tends to be really different from the research side. And I think a lot of people kind of don't know that. I mean, have you thought about pairing with like uh, psychology, like sociology type studies? Because I mean, bridging yes. that knowledge is I would love uh, to really fun. I would absolutely love to be involved in some studies and some people that know how to make studies. Like it's been a minute since I was minoring in psychology, so I don't think that counts anymore. Yeah. I mean, we have at least a few people at FSU that do video game research. So we've had Wally Boot on and he actually studies uh, elderly people driving experience like oh. studies them driving it's not music related but i mean that's that's at least a gateway into that kind of domain which is kind of fun and there's a recent study or a recent in the the fsu big news that they email out it was i don't remember the professor's name but he's in psychology and he was studying adhd games and like kids learning in response through that oh. and I'm, I'm sure music that's will play really a role especially the like oh, yeah. stimuli response and the reward oh, yeah. and the, I would love to be involved in that, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's really fun. Yeah, music kind of keeps to itself a little bit in a lot of institutions. I mean, I'm new here, so I don't really know, but yeah. like a lot of it's sort of like college of music and you do your music classes and you can't really do anything else. Yeah. Um, but I would love for there to be like a lot more cross-pollination. Um, well, whether classes or research or whatever let let ask a scientist gaming be your gateway drug in this world of <laughs> yes. scientists because we used to actually run well we, we still run now is uh, ask a scientist at railroad square park i don't know if you're familiar with that no. there's a first friday event and oh. so the way this actually started was when i first arrived here you know nine years ago i learned about railroad square park and it was like this you know this liberal hist hip hippie bastion of like food trucks and music and oh. art and things like that and the first Ooh. friday of every month it's like set up a tent bring your guitar do whatever oh wow and it's just a really fun space to do that i'm yeah. like anyone can do this so i got a tent got a sign that said ask a scientist and have like four or five of my colleagues stand there drink alcohol and talk to them <laughs> that's and amazing it was, it was really fun yeah. we ran it for six years and then covid killed that for two and a half years of course. But now it's back and David Collins is actually running it. So if you want, right. I'll volunteer your name. And that would be super fun. Ask yeah. a scientist in person. But that's, <laughs> I mean, the, the number of people I've met across disciplinary boundaries has been amazing. It yeah. really helps facilitate that. So our prediction is done. So what is the outcome? Um, if you want to see the numbers there. It's pretty close. Wow, 50, that is pretty 50. close. And the answer is... 
less than fifty percent. Less than fifty percent. You would not think that. Um, this was a little bit of a trick question because the study that did this separates out um, bone from tablets. What? So if you add in tablet game, like games that are spe specifically for tablets. It, it gets it a little bit over 50, but I actually thought it might even be more like my inclination was it was much higher because of the way that mobile games often have a lot more microtransactions and other kinds of ads and like you just accidentally click something and you've bought or you like you give your child an iPad and like they've bought like 20 in-game coins for four thousand dollars or something, you know, like something like that happens. Yeah. I'm assuming a lot more. So less than 50%. The number here was 45%. Yep. So still a lot of of the share. I think they have console games are separate from PC games or separate from tablet. And there might be another one. Maybe like um, not mobile, but There's the study. handheld. There's the study if anyone's interested. Yeah. <laughs> This is like the first game that like creates a narrative around a save point too. Well, there's like save points are still pretty young at this point. Save point, the, the first save point, well, the first ability to save was the first Zelda game for the NES. Mm. And that really kind of opened up, um, opened up the world, it opened up game design because then you could, you can imagine a world in which the player comes back to the game and continues along after going to sleep or something. <laughs> yeah. Well, prior to that save point, like I think Mega Man, it had the grid where you had to put in a code or something like that to get to the save point. And yeah, yeah. like it was more m much more complicated, but yeah. then you could finally just have your own progress. Yep. And save different profiles. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Um, do you, following up on the recent conversation, Cuddle Puppy wants to know what do you think it'll take for video games to get their same respect as literature, film, and painting? Uh, I think I can answer this: old people dying. <laughs> <laughs> the harsh reality. You don't have to comment or quote on that at all, but that's that's usually I how mean, it my progresses. Comment. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's the way progress works, right? Oh, like, man. I, yeah, yeah, I mean, I, so there, video games as a field of study without music necessarily. Is Ken Dorsey seen inside? <laughs> you need to not look at the chat. Yeah, don't. <laughs> um, Video games have been more, a little bit more respected, like as a, as a, you find them in like kind of new, newly developed media studies centers. Um, a lot of them are offshoots from English. Um, a lot of people that I knew that were PhDs in English actually sort of studied instead of like comparative literature, it was comparative media. Um, and then we're kind of doing video games and film and these things and getting into games that way. So there's there's that avenue. Musically, music as a, as a field is generally much more conservative than a lot of other humanistic fields. Um, so that's why we're sort of behind because game studies just by itself has kind of existed it, since the 90s, like pretty prominently. Um, but, yeah, so it wasn't, there's only, I don't I, I, there's only a few like professors who that's their kind of primary specialty that are in like North America. It's actually much more kind of accepted in like Europe that's in, and the UK. It's like a much more common thing there in music. Um, but here there's only a few of us that are, there's a lot of grad students, a lot of undergrads kind of interested in it. And I'm like very excited to to mentor projects specifically on video game music like that's my favorite thing um but yeah it's it's really there's not a, not that many of us who like kind of it, it, admit to it as, as our as our primary thing i mean reese's pieces has the quote here max Planck said science advances one <laughs> funeral at a time i mean that's but science beautiful. science we have we have a little bit more forgiving because there's there's certain objective truths that are just hard to deny. And like quantum mechanics was accepted by many people over a 20 year interval. And so it wasn't just deaths leading to that transition, although it helped. But mm -hmm. I mean, there are certain things that are undeniable, but I mean, I mean music to, to some degree, the subjectivity 
plays a oh, role, yeah. right? Like, and yeah. those biases are much more powerful and much more very much so. To combat. That's, I mean, so I guess that leads to one of my questions: is like, so in sciences we look for this objective description of reality, but intrinsic to music is a human perception component, right? Mm -hmm. And how the brain interprets it. That, but there's there are fundamentals in music theory. Like mm -hmm. there are harmonics, there are sounds, there are, our ears are a certain shape, our, our bones of receptors are a certain shape. Yeah. Like how, how much is objective versus subjective? I mean, it's obviously a blurry line, yeah. but. That, that's a really interesting question because I was kind of thinking, thinking of this earlier re regards to this, this stream because sometimes I joke like music theory is the, the science of music, even though it's not. Technically, music theory, at least in North America, mm -hmm. as it's understood, is very much a kind of like pedagogical analyzing scores, um, and there's a kind there's a there's a component to it, like usually called hermeneutics, where you're sort of interpreting what these what these things mean. So you're like looking at the score. I mean, you can analyze audio too, as you should. It's music. But um, a lot of a lot of it's pretty score based, mm -hmm. um, and then kind of making interpretations based on what you're hearing and maybe what the composer intended if they said anything about it, and um, maybe performance elements and things like this. Um, but a lot of it is not really reliant on kind of anything that's really an absolute truth, and a lot of music psychology. A lot of work done in music and psychology and music cognition, music and neuroscience are, are done kind of outside of music departments, mm, um, unfortunately, yeah, uh, yeah. because sometimes they're, I read some of these studies and their stimuli, they're like, well, we have the basic assumption that minor music is always sad. Oh, and I'm like, no, wow. well, no. <laughs> so like that, Bold. they're sort of like going Bold. in with some certain things and, mm -hmm. and sometimes you wish they, you sort of, I definitely always wish that there was more collaboration there um, in, yeah. every, in every kind of case. I mean, the subtleties, the, what's the, I think the term is timbre, where like not all guitars sound the same. Right? Yeah. There's, there's imperfections, there's subtleties, and yeah. it's yeah. so hard to account for. <laughs> it really is, and I think that theory, like, there's a lot of different ways to interpret even just the word theory. Like, some people really do philosophy, like, dig into philosophy and, and humanistic philosophy and critical theory and things like this that are um, getting into even social aspects. But a lot of what I do is try to connect some of those kind of basic music parameters. And I do write in my research, like some of this stuff, I'm making certain assumptions about a certain type of person, like a certain type of person that has no hearing loss or a certain type of person that might be, like you even have to make assumptions about audio hardware that like these people like, or like the situation of performance and that the performance is good, like these kinds of things. We're talking about listening to music. So we write a lot of these things, but I'm still interested in a lot of like, well, what about those ver those interesting variables that are not, mm -hmm. you know, um, kind of givens and like based on the auditory cortex of a, of a healthy human. Um, like what are, <laughs> what are they? <laughs> <laughs> my study group is healthy humans. <laughs> I mean, I've, I came out it's of a true. cold and I was like very congested. I couldn't hear anything. So like, you know. I mean, but that's very true. There's no absolute truth in human response. And that's, yeah, I, I empathize with social sciences and you're going beyond that to human perception. Human hard. perception. And like, and I try to make sure that I'm not saying this is, this is true. Like, even though it's just my experience, but mm -hmm. trying to open up possibilities for thinking about how, well, how does music shape our experience? Like how does yeah. music shape the way we might understand the situation? Like even things like walking into a department store and they're playing certain music, how is that kind of shaping maybe what you might want to buy? Like there's there's a lot of actually studies on that. The answer is quite easy right now because it's Mariah Carey, all I want for Christmas is you. Already? <laughs> no, it's not yet. It's, it's coming oh, no. though. It's inevitable. <laughs> like oh, Thanos God. of the Christmas world. <laughs> for real, for real, oh my God. Oh. oh, the follow up on that. Is there any video game music you're sick of hearing? Like, have you listened to any of this so much that you're just dead inside Ooh. at this point? At the moment? Um, yes. Uh, I'm currently, I don't know if anyone else is a, a player of Final Fantasy XIV. 
the critically acclaimed MMORPG that has a um, free trial up to level 60. I'm trying to do the... The, the, <laughs> the plug. Yeah. <laughs> the stream no, brought to you by... <laughs> <laughs> no restrictions on playtime. Um, but... Yeah, like some of the battle music, because like there's there's sometimes that's that's a game I haven't played a game in a while until I started playing that a few months ago, mm -hmm. where I'm like I can really sit there and play it for hours and hours and hours and kind of do the same sort of grindy things over and over again. Yeah. We actually in video game class we're talking about grind and grind culture in video games because mm -hmm. video games like this, like if you want to gain levels and like be good enough for the boss, you have to like repeatedly yep. go around in circles and wait for that random encounter and like fight these bosses where this music's the same and you're just like, okay, and you're just yeah. pressing A even if A is stupid because these people are magic users and so you should be not making them <laughs> attack with their cane. Like that's what I've been doing this whole time. I'm so sorry. Yeah, uh, but um uh yeah so like anyway talking about grind culture and uh uh yeah. about music well, i don't even remember what i was talking about you're, yeah no worries look at uh, these jellies that's why i'm here so, <laughs> the, the, the recent game you started you're, you're grinding oh, it out yeah. and you're, you're hating the music at this point i love a lot of the music in that game and i just yeah. got to a new the next like expansion so there's a lot of new music but some of the old battle music like i'm just, <laughs> just so tired of it. i just don't care anymore <laughs> i do not care anymore <laughs> Oh um, man, that's fair. But, uh, because it is, um, a lot of the early music is very sort of repetitive, looped, and a lot of the later music gets a little bit more interesting. Um, but yeah, it's like it's kind of like this at some point. Um, yeah. No, completely understandable. All right, Critical Ninja wants to know: Have you worked with or observed video game music that is designed almost as a character of its own? For example, Half Life Two, Half Life Two uses music that sounds almost alive and alien-like to represent Ooh. indirect antagonist of the game. That is fun. Yeah, I mean, in in Celeste, is there a name for that? I mean, that's where the beyond music diagenic, is a right? is sort of like almost a character. Yeah, you know, I don't know. Mm of a particular uh, people have sort of talked about this and talked about music and agency mm -hmm. um often not even in video games but just in maybe concert music and you know how we often have a perception that when we're hearing a certain musical line this is like psychological mm -hmm. like a sort of gestalt like continuation principles of like the line is continuing um but we can often we often use metaphors i'm just gonna run away we often <laughs> <laughs> we often use metaphors um that talk about oh this this sort of harmony maybe was like um like defeated by this other harm like this other harmony yeah. came in. like we sort of under start to understand music even if it has nothing else to do with it in terms of certain agents and even if we're not thinking about people playing the instruments we might be thinking this way and so there's a little bit of that theory although it's not there's not a particular word for it a lot of video games and a lot of like film and opera use like what's called light motives mm -hmm. Um, which sort of draws back from Wagnerian opera and he kind of, he being Wagner, very sort of um, full of himself, made up, basically made this word up for himself, but uh, made, <laughs> made up this idea, it's really interesting though, of like different sort of character themes, place themes, event themes, even mood themes that come in and out with each other and are very representative of characters so even if the character is not there you might hear their leitmotif and that might signify them now that's not the same as like the music itself alone not necessarily representing a character but being its own kind of thing mm. and i think that's really a kind of a fascinating sort of perception and i think that that's something that video games can really really kind of do and play with is when you hear certain themes and maybe there is no character and maybe you just start to have a fear or, or a, a feeling around a certain kind of um, a certain theme that comes in or a certain vibe or a certain certain representation of something that maybe feels almost humanistic or or like a like a character. And I think um, I think there's ways in which you ha feel like when you're playing video games, you might have certain agency over the way that the music um, kind of comes in and out mm -hmm. um, because you are kind of controlling that even if it's like a really non-interactively music game music musically interactive game 
All right, 918, we should do another prediction and probably let's change games. Do, yeah, we'll do uh, some journey, right? Yeah, let's let's go to some journey. Um, change this input. All right, we're gonna change up games as soon as this loads. <laughs> as I die slowly. <laughs> um, move the mouse, wake that guy up. So we better turn off some Final Fantasy, otherwise that's gonna... <laughs> I think we're dying in the background. <laughs> Here I go. Oh, uh, yeah. Let me turn this off. Alright. We're gonna switch over. We're running this on PC. It turns out it's a PlayStation 3 game. Fun factoid, you can't stream uh, PlayStation 3 through the HD60 Elgato capture card. It has a restriction that you can't actually do that for some reason. There's, there's a feature you can turn off on PlayStation 1, 2, 4, and 5, but not on PlayStation 3. So your PlayStation wouldn't have worked anyway. So yeah, I don't know. I think it has to be hard. <laughs> exactly. We learned that the hard way. Brad Johnson came over with a PlayStation 3 and we couldn't get it to stream. So, oh, man. but no, we got this through Steam. So it, 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 it was originally released on PlayStation 3 in 2012, I mm -hmm. think was the, the date. And then it came to Steam in like 20, 18 or something yeah, like that. Recent. Yeah, relatively recent. Yeah. So it got ported. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can play. There, there are emulators for, for PlayStation 3 and 4. Unfortunately, my computer can't run PlayStation and stream at the same time. So yeah, we're actually playing this on a different computer. All right. So this is Journey. Do you want to explain anything about this game? I, I had never played or seen this game before, honestly. Journey is a fascinating game for the fact that it has very, very little text. So it's really the opposite of what we just saw. Um, it is sort of minimalistic and it has music that a lot of people have described, a lot of people have described this game as just like stunningly beautiful of an experience and like a kind of interesting Kind, not an art game, but I, um, some people have said this is like, this is art. And it sort of fascinates me what makes a game art for people and what makes a game kind of overwhelmingly, effectively emotional and beautiful, especially when it doesn't have a lot of the things that we think might be ne necessary, which is a, like a particular kind of narrative or maybe somebody dies and like that's really emotional. Um, this is a very kind of simplistic sort of platformy puzzle game. And one of the interesting things, which I hope happens, is that you can be sort of randomly paired with anyone who is currently playing the game at the same time. You don't know who they are, you can't talk to them, you can only do the kind of ping at them. And they can sort of, the idea is that, I mean, there's no directions, but it tends to be that people sort of help each other through the game. They help each other. People who've played this game before, they'll replay it, um, and they'll sort of want to help the newbies um, <laughs> if they get paired. They tend to, it tends to be like if you've played a lot, you tend to get paired with someone who hasn't played before. <laughs> Um, is there a teabag button? <laughs> Asking the important questions. I don't think they would yeah. call this an art game if that happens. I so. mean, if, if, you, if you hold down space bar. <laughs> hold there you go. <laughs> there's, so then you do a little jump puppy. Up, yeah, actually, that's a teabag yeah. with a note at the end. <laughs> Cuddle yeah. puppy is our local tro troll. Is oh, it really good. art without teabags? Good point. <laughs> journey is a game about taking a journey. <laughs> I mean, yeah, so you, you have a mountain up there and it's like, you just go towards it. Yeah. Um, and you kind of figure out what to do as you go. And one of the things is that there's been a lot of sort of fan art and fan narratives and even like fan music too that like tries to almost piece together what they think happened or like specifically happened because this seems like the ruins of a lost civilization. And you get kind of hints as you go also depending on kind of what you're doing. I still don't know how to jump. 
All if right. I can. I don't know if I, maybe I didn't get it yet. <laughs> Enough with this this highbrow art. <laughs> I'm like, gosh. I need to... <laughs> oh, oh, critical Nina. Oh, gosh. Has the brown note been discussed yet? <laughs> so that, do, you, do you cover that in music theory classes? <laughs> I'm so glad someone brought that up. <laughs> Thank you, Critical Nina. <laughs> I, always, I always like bring that up randomly and see if people laugh. And people are very serious. They're like, what is the brown note? Do you mean like brown noise? You know, like, like brown noise. Um, we do not cover that in theory class. Only... <laughs> Oh, oh okay. No, I do I do eventually get this forgot. Alright. So you're kind of one of the things that's really interesting musically about this game is it is has this kind of progressive soundtrack. It's very ambient, but as you go and as you sort of approach these guys, these looks like little Netflix things. <laughs> they always reminded me of the old Netflix um logo. But they're just like little scarf thingies. Um, you kind of, your scarf gets longer and you can sort of fly more when that happens. All right, I'm starting to remember how to play this game. It's been a little bit. I mean, sphincters have a resonant frequency. <laughs> Everyone's is different. Oh, man. Wow. <laughs> no, that's, that's a, that's a psych psychology. Oh, there you go. The fly. When did there you get that? The flying? Yeah. I, you have to. I forgot that you have to like collect these little, okay, little that's... dudes. Um, it's part of kind of part of your scarf situation. You get like a little bit more flying power. So I, I always play games a little bit before my guests just to test them out and make sure the controls work and everything. But one of the nice parts about this is I have this game now, so I'm gonna have to beat it. But speaking of which, do you know <laughs> what the speed run record in this game is? Oh, it's gotta be. I don't know how you can speed through. So. 30 minutes? Like, can you go fast through this game? It, got, it really limits you, but I don't know what you can kind of hack into. And yeah. Like... So you have, you have an understanding of the speedrunning world where it's all the rules you think you know don't exist. Yeah. And there's some glitch that gets you through something it's fast. Like, I'm not sure if what kind of glitches are in this game, actually. So the answer is 17 minutes. Oh, okay. Which is, it's a reasonable time, but I think the, the walkthrough I saw on YouTube was something like four hours. If you oh, want that's to, like, long. Explore everything. Oh, yeah. That's if you want to get everything. You can kind of just play again to get everything, and it'll kind of keep. It'll be like, oh, you got all these tokens or whatever. It, it's like I think it's a two-hour-ish normal game. Yeah. Um, to get through everything. Oh, there we go. Okay, I'm doing it like usually. This is more of a controller game, and I'm doing it on the keyboard, so I'm a little bit uh, awkward here, but. No worries. Mediocre but, yeah. gameplay, part of our title. <laughs> yeah. so. I'm like, but it, it could be just bad, not just mediocre. <laughs> we don't know where that line is. That, that's that subjectivity scale we talked yeah. about earlier. It's all. I don't know what it's telling me to do. Press the. I think that was a space bar, actually, because it. Yeah, it wants me to get all of them. It wanted, wanted me to be in the middle and get all of them. Uh, but I didn't. I, I did it stupidly. Um, no worries. All right, anyone just joining us, we're about an hour and a half in. Ask Scientist Gaming, Mediocre Gameplay, Expert Science. My guest today is Julian Grasso. She is an expert in music theory, particularly music theory as applied to video game and the immersive experience that comes with video game music. Um, she is happy to answer any questions you have about video games, video game music, gameplay, journey. We'll talk about that. Brown notes has been brought up. <laughs> <laughs> whatever, whatever you, wherever you want to take really, this Really, wherever you want to go. We're, we're happy to take it. It's a journey. It. That's, that's the point. <laughs> <laughs> and the quote of the night, is it really art without tea bags? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the takeaway. <laughs> One of the fundamental, that needs its own sub-discipline. <laughs> <laughs> All right, oh, we yeah. should do another prediction. Which one do you want to do? Uh, you can do the maybe the music theory-ish one. Then I'm, I'm just going to go on down the list, I guess. Just All for right, fun. So this one, a little I different. think you'll have to explain this one a little bit. <laughs> this is... All right. It's a silly question, but it actually has a real answer. <laughs> All right. So two minutes, is that enough explanation time? And that, for, for this? For the window, yeah. In? So I, I can yeah. post it. I can put it at two minutes or five minutes. Two minutes is good. Yeah, two it doesn't really. Good. All right. Can't so the, explain it too much. <laughs> so, so the question as written, which perfect interval or note interval is more perfect? Is it the perfect fifth or perfect, perfect fourth? So what's a perfect interval? Why are there two of them? Um, so these are these are considered note like intervals between notes, like a like if you start with a the 
a C. Mm -hmm. um, C to up to F is a fourth. C up to G is a fifth, and it's a perfect fifth um, because they're also like it's not there's not imperfect fifths or fourths, but um, there are there is what's called the tritone or also called the augmented fourth or the diminished fifth, which is like in between the perfect fourth and perfect fifth. Um, and it, the the terminology is like really really old. It comes from like medieval Europe. So, but we still use it. Um, and there's still uh, a kind of weird music theory historical residue around which is the more perfect. Um, <laughs> so which is more perfect? But it has to do with with ratios. So there's numbers. Perfect so there's <laughs> yeah. there's foundations in this. I don't know what I'm. Doing. The question is generally it's one of more one one is considered more perfect than the other. Is, is that the gist of the question? And yes, one, one is, is considered more perfect? more perfect than the other. And I thought it was a fun science question since it's so silly. It's <laughs> not very scientific at all. I mean, <laughs> there are certain agreed upon truths that have no <laughs> rigorous foundation whatsoever. Okay, if I press this, I'm going back up here and getting more scarf in the meantime, because <laughs> I'm really bad at, okay. Oh man, we leaned hard one way towards the end there. It's about a 50-50 building up, but then it went. Go this way, go, 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 go. Oh yes. All right, uh, five seconds. Put your predictions in there now. All right, so it's 79, in terms of points gambled, 79% said perfect fifth, 21% said perfect fourth. What's the perfect, more perfect interval? It's the perfect fifth. Perfect fifth. Um, it's based on the ratio of frequencies between the two notes of two thirds, which is more perfect um, than the the ratio of four thirds. Wait, oh, I already forget. <laughs> five, five fourths, four fifths. Um, maybe it's four thirds. Obviously, I haven't done this in a while. I should yeah. have uh, studied. No worries. Oh, I need to go get this guy. All right, I think I did it all. There we go. I'm being really bad at this game too. Um, because, uh, and traditionally, um, it's been considered that the fifth, um, is less, uh, dissonant, so more kinder to the ear, hmm. um, which is based on some, like, very old sci science, um, music actually was considered a science for a very, very long time in Europe, um, it was the in kind of the scholastic era in medieval Europe where they had, um, like the word trivia comes out of this. There was the trivium and the quadrivium. Hmm. And the quadrivium was the, f was the four topics that were meant to be like, like important. And the trivium were the three that were not as important. And the trivium was like, what was it? It was like, like rhetoric, things that had to do with like, um, speech, oration. Mm. Uh, the quadrivium was like astronomy, music. <laughs> um, what, what else was it? Like it was about, it was like science and then music. So music was really considered a core part of science. And a lot of it was like kind of counting these ratios and a little bit of a, what was, what we would now think of as like a pseudoscience around what the sort of music and the planets, like there was a kind of astro musicology thing going on, um, and what that had to do with, like, like Jupiter was a perfect fifth. Like it was a whole thing. It was basically astrology. <laughs> um, so it's kind of fun. But with music. But with music, yeah, and awesome. like, and they're like all the planets vibrate at these frequencies, yeah. and then we can trace this to tonality, and we can trace this to music, and then like certain musics um, are more kind of in harmony with the universe than other ones. And then religion kind of took over as it does. Um, right, I have the list here. Quadrivium was arithmetic, geometry, geometry music, and astronomy. astronomy. Yeah. And then the trivium was grammar, logic, and rhetoric. Yeah, yeah. So That's fun. So I don't know when we got bumped. <laughs> <laughs> Harsh. <laughs> uh, um, but, uh, yeah, once, once like... Um, like in Europe, sort of like Christianity kind of, you know, took over. Um, music, kind of as we knew it then, 
especially music theory, like because music, music theory is pretty old. There's a lot of a lot of understand like a lot of study of music because the, it was thought to be a science. And so back then, um, when Christianity started to take over, it started to apply a lot of sort of Christian theology onto music theory. And so it became that um, not so much about intervals and things like this, but things like if music was in in groups of three, like the like the beats were th- of three, like a waltz or something. There wasn't yeah. a waltz back then, but in three instead of in four or in two, it, that was considered more perfect. Also, they use the word perfect, more perfect because it reflected um, the Holy the Trinity. Trinity yeah. um, so that kind of music was um, considered like better and holy and things like this. And to be fair, um, there was a lot of what music survives and also music theory that survives from then is going to be music that really uh, respects the church because they, uh, we had our, our kind of archivists were monks um, in monasteries uh, mm-hmm. and they were concerned with preserving church music first and foremost. So a lot of our, a lot of what we understand as like medieval music, a lot of it, I mean, there's a plenty of non-religious music that has survived, but so much of it, mm-hmm. um, is like for like specifically Catholic to Catholic mass music. So, Ooh, so I've heard uh, conflicting accounts of like the church describing certain chord progressions or certain chords as being demonic. Is yeah, there the any tritone. The, so that augmented yeah, augmented is, is, fourth slash d- diminished fifth, which is between the perfect fourth and fifth. Mm-hmm. That is the diabolo in musica. The, and that's real. The devil in music. Yeah, it was. It's a little bit overblown, of course. Like yeah. everything is because that's so dramatic. Um, but they're sort of like in the the kind of uh, sort of Reformation times and sort of like more of a late medieval into the Renaissance. We're starting to get the the Catholic Church. The Pope is like, okay, so the music needs to be more. It needs to not have these certain things. Like it can't have a lot of tritones because it just doesn't sound good. And and because it doesn't sound good, it's the devil. So the devil's <laughs> coming out in music. And we also That's need so to good. have like a lot of a lot of music before then was actually quite complex and really dissonant. And they're like, no, this is bad. And so a lot of music becomes almost like to our modern ears more more dumbed down after that in at least the surviving music because the pope and like everyone was like you know what we need to um be more holy um and more more consonants more less dissonance and um because that's too secular you know um so there's a lot of that oh Oh, is this another person if they only saw what modern christian music has turned into Oh my god, just I know. Like, just right? lazy pop, like, <laughs> just the most empty, yeah. soulless, just there's nothing there. It, it's breathtaking how empty it is. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> anyway, we won't dive there's into a, that. There's a lot going on there. But but related to that, the, the tritones and demonic notes, Critical yeah. Ninja wants to know, how do you feel about some horror games using uh, frequencies that humans can't hear in order to make them feel uncomfortable? So oh, sub, like sub-audible. Can, like, feel, yeah. but not hear? Yep. Yeah. How do I feel about that? I think that's cool. I think that might feel manipulative. We do have also in Journey, we have a partner now, like a rando. And that's they're fun. they're leading me. They're like, you're dumb and bad at this game. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, it's because I'm t- you don't know that I'm talking to the people about I hope the they devil randomly stumble upon a YouTube video <laughs> on Ask a Science. Oh, that would gaming, be so great. And they hear tritones and brown notes and <laughs> <laughs> They're like, why is she so bad? Um, they don't know who I am. Um, yes, tritones and brown notes. Um, they're all kind of related, and we are we're talking about things that have like a sub sort of subhuman, so not subhuman, sub-audible. a subaudible yeah. frequency yeah, yeah. that can be used to signify the subhuman. Um, does signify does does evoke dread in humans? That's like been really studied. Um, I mean, but it's it's a bit disingenuous to like claim that's a trick because even audible music is trying to do that I know. just in a different like, way, right? It's I'm being manipulated. Like that's what all music is doing. We're yeah. being manipulated, and I'm like here for it. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, but it is amazing how powerful it can be. It can, it, it's you. really interesting, and it's like, why aren't people talking about some of this stuff anymore? And I think it really. A manipulation does sound like a kind of a bad sort of word, yeah, but um, a negative, negative, frame, negative of frame of it. Yeah. Um, where did my friend go? 
<laughs> he's okay. okay, there he is. He's, he's pinging at me. I, oh, I don't know why I always assume they're a he. This is my like internalized, like, yeah, oh, my boys manifest. play video games. Yep. Um, Yes. Okay, and then that unlocks more little little dudes. Okay. So is there, is there an incentive to walk other people through this, or is it they just no. do this out of the goodness of their heart? It's out of like it's out of the good. It's like a part of the sort of community, and like there's never there's not a lot of like there wasn't like the developer saying you need to do this or anything. Yeah. Like it, like it kind of just developed as as a sort of thing and that people were doing as like a, you're sort of going through this journey together with this person. Sometimes like they disconnect and you, you pair with a different person. Mm -hmm. um, and at the very end, at the very end of the credits, which have this very dramatic music, it's like, here are all the people. It finally gives you the usernames. And like, I don't know, like that that's always an emotional moment. Like you finally figure out the people that joined you along the way of this like really emotional, oh, so this is like, so these are one of the things, you don't have to get these things, but he or she or they just showed me um, where it was. So they're trying to show me where the secrets are. That's so awesome. yeah, they're being a very good guide. I appreciate yeah. them. I mean. And I'm trying to, I'm trying to. The, the more important question ever. in any multiplayer game, I'm sure there's a law behind this, but has somebody tried to draw a dick yet? <laughs> um, I don't do know if you can. Game? I like I don't of course of course they have. That is that is <laughs> that the is the law basic. What is it? It's T T D, right? Yep. Mythic Quest. <laughs> yeah. right, you know. Yep. Um, <laughs> and I'm sure that that has stats here, but is I don't know true? if you can possibly do it yeah. in this game. And I don't think the stand <laughs> really allows that. I, I'm sure a speedrunners glitch something. <laughs> I'm sure they <laughs> cuddle puppy. Barbie's pony, pony adventure player base is a total sausage fest. <laughs> <laughs> How would you know? <laughs> if you really want a sausage fest, you should play the game Genital Jousting, which I have on Steam, and I don't know why I have it. Um, uh, it was a gift. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's something where you do just play as phalluses. Um, <laughs> And the, the 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 thing is the noise the the sound design. <laughs> Critical Ninja, I own it too. <laughs> you guys could play on stream. <laughs> I don't know. I'm like I don't have tenure yet. I don't know what to do. I, <laughs> I just got here. I need not be fired. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> <laughs> but we did already talk about the brown note. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's all downhill from there. It was the game of the year from 2012 to present. <laughs> Every year, it breaks all criteria. <laughs> Written volumes about it. Yeah, yeah. And one of these days, I'll write like a trollish article and see oh, if it gets accepted. <sighs> that would be fun. All right, I think I have to finally go up here. <laughs> but when you get tenure, you're going to become a full-time genital jousting streamer. <laughs> I mean, if you can make a living doing it and have fun. I mean, hell. Yeah. I've gotten this far. <laughs> exactly. They, they were just like, your FSU just emailed me and they're like, your Alienware laptop is on its way. <laughs> did, um, did you get an Alienware? Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> I, I negotiated a gaming, I already have a gaming PC, but I wanted a gaming laptop because I wanted to bring it to class. And mm -hmm. and I negotiated that as part of, part of my... Um, job offer uh, that's, I'm like that's, your that's startup. so funny I'm gonna do this and they're like sure and I'm like oh my gosh <laughs> they really how, did it how do you people let me do this but no there's uh, so part of my I don't know if you saw the room when we walked in but on the wall there's all these science photos and so yeah. one of my group strategies we do one science photo a week on Twitter mm -hmm. and so it's it's usually brightly colored glowy stuff and things like that but we we bought a photography box through my allocation fund because it's oh, I mean, it's part of my science yeah. outreach and everything. But what's really cool is we won it was like the 2016 photo of the year from Chemical and Engineering News. We got like a free camera, <laughs> oh, so we have sweet. a camera and a photography box, and yeah, they make some really amazing photos. You really got to yeah, that's awesome. You got to yeah. use the try to get as many resources as you can from your wherever you end up employed. Who, yeah. people who are not yet out of school, even if you're in school, you know, just ask for things, see what happens. Yeah. That's so what I did as an undergrad and they gave me like seven Zelda games and an NES. And what's the worst? They say no, <laughs> right? Like, yeah, then they say no and they're like, I mean, you know. I mean, pick and choose graduate. your battles, obviously. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. I was trying to see if my friend is still here. I think they are. Oh, they're coming. 
just heard about trombone champ today. Definitely oh my play gosh. it on Bardic Knowledge. <laughs> that, that's that's a, I don't know what that is. Oh, this last yesterday on Twitter, this like blew up this game, and I was almost gonna say, can we play this game? Because oh. I think it's out. I thought it wasn't out yet, so I didn't say anything. Oh um, yep, there it is. Fifteen dollars on Steam. Obscene. <laughs> and that's not obscene, but I mean it's obscene not in a gentle jousting way, but in a trombone. <laughs> There's the Came music. Out of journey. <laughs> it's, 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 <laughs> so not, it's so the opposite of what the music is right now in this game. <laughs> there you go, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> There's trombone champ. <laughs> <laughs> so is this touchscreen? What is this? I'm actually not sure the mechanisms, but you play all these. A lot of them are classical tunes, and it just sounds ridiculous because it's trombone <laughs> being played poorly. <laughs> I, I would have set this up. We could have done it. I know. I thought I didn't think it was out yet. I just thought it was a preview. But then, like today, I saw people had bought it. September fifteenth, like, ah. it came out. Wow. If anyone's interested, here's a link. Trombone Champ. It's mouse and keyboard, apparently. Yeah, apparently. I mean, it's so pretty... we we haven't dove into this genre at all. This this the rhythm based gaming. Oh yeah. Because one of the one of the games you listed was an option is the three DS. Uh, Theater rhythm Final Fantasy. Like Final it's, Fantasy. it's a Final Fantasy rhythm game. So there's a lot going on there. Yeah. So, um, so those of you not familiar, rhythm games are literally like you press buttons or you have a guitar or whatever to do it to the rhythm of the game, and that's the challenge. So yeah. this is under that genre. <laughs> yes. Trombones. And it's so silly. Um, and it uses so much classical music that the classical music world is like kind of getting onto it and being like, what is this? And I'm like, oh my God, I have to, we have to write about, I have to play this, I have to write about it. Um, but yeah, I, I wasn't, an, I didn't, I, real, I had not realized it was had, had come out or else I would have definitely made us <laughs> play it on the stream. <laughs> but having that Next music time. while Journey is happening is also just funny. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> not diagenic. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, I like it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, so, so did you get into this genre of gaming, the rhythm based? Obviously, the Final Fantasy one, but like yeah. Guitar Hero and Rock Band and I played DJ all Hero and all of them, you yeah, were into it. Yeah, yeah, I was definitely into it. I know that there were a lot of like musicians that would play those games and be like, well, it's not real. Um, and it's actually harder because I know how to play guitar. So I'm like doing, I'm like, I have certain things in my fingers. And, yeah. And I don't know how to play guitar, so I was fine with that. But, um, Come on, friend. Hello. I love that we got how to have a random partner. Um, <laughs> it turns out it's Cuddle Puppy all along. <laughs> it was Cuddle Puppy all along. <laughs> um, I'm just going to keep going. See what happens. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's kind of sad yeah. that like, that genre was huge from like 2005 oh, yeah. to 2012, and then it just thing. disappeared. Right? And like, it, part of it was... Um, I think some of like peripherals started to be, uh, like, I mean, the recession was kind of annoyingly long. And so yeah. the peripherals being expensive and then like needing to buy new control, like extra controllers mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for every other game that was coming out and yeah. like having them not be cross platform was kind of annoying. And then the pandemic hit and kind of killed, killed a lot of that because there was still quite a bit. There's, you know, Guitar Hero was still happening. Mm -hmm. Um, but I recently played this game called Fuser, which is like a DJ, it's not DJ Hero, but it is like a DJ simulator and it's it has no extra controls. It's only, it's like on Switch. Well, it's actually on a bunch of, it has no extra controls. You can just play with whatever the controller is. It's really fun. It gives you a lot of control. It has a lot of popular music that's like currently popular. Um, I don't think that many people have played it. I think it came out like February 2020 or something really tragic for um, uh, anything, anyone buying anything. Um, but I mean, like people bought Animal Crossing en masse in uh, March 2020. So, but like it wasn't well, um, <laughs> it wasn't well, um, uh, I think, advertised because I didn't really know about it until a few years ago. All right, I'll, th I'll throw that link in chat too. We're just yeah. plugging all these games. Yeah, play all the games. That's, that's, my, that's my assignment. Exactly. <laughs> As a professor. Um, I mean, that's so. What, what does your homework assignment look like in a video game music class? 
I do a lot of different things. So, so far, my current video game class has had to... I did make a, an assigned game um, with Proteus. Um, mm. So they all had to kind of download Steam. Um, and there's another there's another assigned game they're going to play later called 140. Mm. And that means like 140 beats per minute. It's a rhythm platformer. It's a really cool. interesting one. Um, I have no hope of playing a rhythm platformer and talking at the same time. I can't I can barely do it so, so paying I've, attention. So. I, I, I have had two guests play Rock Band on stream. <laughs> well, we actually play Clone Hero, doing? which is a clone game. But yeah, Christina yeah. Holmes, she was actually better at that than she was playing Pitfall, <laughs> which was amazing. I don't, I don't know how she did it, but. Amazing. You can imagine, I it's it's tough. It's yeah. tough to do both simultaneously. It really is. I and could barely play a role playing game, which is really just walking and <laughs> pressing A. So that really goes to show. Uh, Matt yeah. Hauer played uh, uh, Crypt of the Necro Dancer. Yeah, that, that one's one? a good one. That's yeah. a, such an interesting also genre because it is still also rhythmic, but mm -hmm. it's more of a dungeon crawler roguelike thing. Um, yeah. But your success is dependent on keeping rhythm. You have to. You have to, and you're constantly kind of grooving around. Yeah. 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 All right, we're at 9:50. We should do another prediction. Just All go right. down the list. This is a fun one. Yeah, this yeah, is, yeah. This is. One. I mean, rock band is monkeys playing. <laughs> like, it's not that different. <laughs> All right, we have another prediction, ladies and gentlemen. If you're not following, click the follow button. Spend your internet points on predictions. It's just for fun. These standard internet units are worthless outside of this. Unless you want us to drink, um, we can totally do that. <laughs> we always do that. <laughs> um, so we are happy to mm -hmm. continue that endeavor. Um, we're going to throw up a, a question here, and this is this is research. This is fairly well documented. Which animal is better at keeping a beat? Is it monkeys or birds? Prickly pear, not as good as spicy. Yeah, I, I have spicy is my favorite. <laughs> so are you good? Do you need another one? I'm still good, yeah. Really, this is just an elaborate excuse for me to drink on a weeknight. <laughs> I mean, of course. That's what that's what my Thursday nights are too. Yeah. So. And I teach every day, including Friday. <laughs> oh really? So I'm I'm Monday, yeah. Wednesday, Friday at eight AM. Ooh, eight AM. I have a three hundred and thirty person gen chem class. Oh my goodness. How many TAs do you have for that kind of class? Four of them. I feel like you need more. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I've, I've leaned on multiple choice testing. It's just a yeah, easier. And yeah. Like I do data analysis on the outcomes and things, so it's not too bad. But George Jettison has redeemed. Take a drink. All uh, right. You guys have about a minute left. Which animal is better at keeping a beat? Is it monkeys or is it birds? Use your standard internet <laughs> points. You're watching. You're acquiring them. Click that predict button at the top of chat. Uh, click on it. Predict as much. Or gamble as much as you feel appropriate for your. No confidence in this answer. Musicologist, another streamer. Yay! Uh, it's Dana. She 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 um. Saw you were on her stream with me like um, twenty five days ago. I think it was <laughs> yeah, uh, on Thursdays. So we got a oh. fellow. Uh, so yeah, another yeah. Uh, music theorist. Follow musicologist. Yeah, well, she will. She does. Um, <laughs> I'm glad you called her a music theorist because there's there's usually music historians and music music theorists as like separate people. But I was she's and we call the music historians musicologists, even though we're all musicologists. But then I'm always I'm always saying she does a lot of music theory. So I'm glad that I'm glad oh. that's going to stick. <laughs> <laughs> well. Well, I, I watched some of that stream, and it was like it was looking at. I think it was from your thesis, the the Final Fantasy IV. You were actually looking at excerpts yeah, we were from looking music, at the which is really the fun. exact music that I was analyzing. Yeah, which is kind of like yeah, some the stuff that we did already hear in this particular stream. Outside, oh, it's, um, it's really fun. It's it's things that I've experienced, but I don't necessarily have the language to describe it. So I appreciate that you understand it at a fundamental level, like triplets and things like that. Yeah, and Why yeah. it affects you in a certain way. So yeah. that's really fun. <laughs> but musicologist, if you have any really hard questions, <laughs> while she <laughs> no. plays Journey. <laughs> With the keyboard, so like, just so you know, I'm like, not <laughs> doing <framework>. very well. <laughs> so I have a PlayStation to USB converter, but it, this Steam version doesn't it's take like an external yeah. controller. It's so such, I, such a weird... I apologize. No, you're... I mean, good. I feel, I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting the feel let, of it. Let's be honest. This is a far cry from what was it? Trombone, 
Trombone <laughs> champ? <laughs> trombone champ. <laughs> Next time you're on, trombone champ will be mandatory. That, absolutely. For for three hours straight. <laughs> no questions. Trombone champ. Be silent. I got to focus. <laughs> this is important. <laughs> Real-time Roman oh, numeral God. analysis. Oh, Go. No. no. <laughs> what is that? It's so, oh, Never heard that's what that. she did. Roman numeral analysis is a way of taking tonal music, which is music that has like a sense of key, like a sense of this is the this is the tonic, this is the home note, uh, this is your main note, and saying, well, it's really based on a scale, or like a major or minor, minor scale usually, and then assigning chords that are based on that scale to Roman numerals. Why we use Roman numerals instead of numbers, I actually forget, I think I knew at, this, at some point. Um, it's to look fancy, that's how I'm gonna say it. Um, it's to look smart. But like a, a chord based on your your first scale degree, your tonic is is your is your one chord, your, and so then your two chord is built off the second scale degree, that kind of thing. And so Roman numeral analysis is a way of accounting for chords mm. in a way that like a pop music analysis or a jazz analysis might just say like, oh, this is an F minor seven chord. I see. Um, with like classical music, that's really quite tonal and very much based on a scale. You would use Roman numeral analysis to give a sense of function and place. I see. So it's a bookkeeping form. That yeah, is accepted in the community, and it's it's also something that like is like the most kind of commonly taught form of music. A lot of people think Roman numerals when they think of music theory, if they've taken any of it, because that's often where a lot of that kind of analysis starts. Is so if you hear that. people talk about rock music being one four five one yes. over and over, they're talking about common progression. Uh, just the yep. We've seen Axis of Awesome four chords and the Bach where every yep. song has the same. This is okay. Yeah, the this sort of the, the Paco Bell's canon has yeah. the same progression. Yeah, you can use you can use the chord names like with like you know again saying like F minor or something like that. But a lot of them, in order to generalize across different keys, you're not just saying F and D and all these different letters. You can say they're all one four five one that kind of thing. Am I still trying to do this and just failing? Okay, what do I what am I think I already went up here. What am I doing? Let me go to the mountain. Go to the mountain, you idiot. All right. Yeah, All right. here's here's the axis of uh, Taco Bell equals cannon. <laughs> Taco Bell's cannon. Thank you. <laughs> That's like when you eat Taco Bell. <laughs> the brown note. We already covered this. We are. We just keep Mus coming back. Musicologist, you note. missed out. <laughs> we took a journey. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, Jesper Jewell wrote a whole essay on failure in video games. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of really interesting game studies, folk, and they're they're talking about things like failure, things like frustration, things like um, transgression, like things with speed runs where you're not really playing it the right way, you're playing it for a different reason. Mm. Um, and we're actually, I, I bring this up too, um, that uh, we're kind of exploring this a little bit in the class right now, um, and thinking about how music could be... Um, Maybe even if it's the same, like you're not changing the music, like what happens when you change the music? Is that also a form of cheating in some way? Like mm. what is that really do doing yeah. to the game design? Um, and like having those kinds of conversations. Um, <laughs> Arsh, that was the end of round two. So you failing in Journey is totally still productive. <laughs> oh, I, I start like the first class, I always show this this game recording that I did of Breath of the Wild, and I did I did two takes of it, um, and one was a complete failure, and I was just hitting all the wrong buttons, and it was just so tragic, but you could hear different music when that happens. Oh, that's fun. And so it's sort of like, and when I was really good, I was doing it really fast, was fighting really fast, and like the, you can't even hear half the half of the music, mm. and so it's like, well, I'm, I'm doing it, I'm a good game player, but I'm not maybe accessing all that the music, the game, the game music that the game has to offer. Mm -hmm. So it's an interesting case, and it's always something I'm like, if you're bad at video games, like often you can have such a, such an interesting perspective. I always like to talk to folks who've never played any video games or just even a particular genre, and they will always have an interesting perspective of what's happening. They won't have a natural inclination to press a certain button to jump or something. So is there something? than in the environment that's maybe cueing them to do that. Mm -hmm. Or maybe the music even, like to some extent, like is the music shaping their play in some way that I don't even know because I like played this game a million times, stuff like that. So 
I'm always really open to being bad at <laughs> video yeah, games. I, I wish there was a version yeah. of like sound perception tracking. So like they have software now that can track your eye motion, the eye mo right? Yeah. Like visual, you can see mm -hmm. where it's going. Is there is there an audible equivalent of that? Oh. I guess functional MRI would be the closest. Oh my thing God, yeah, you'd do. have to be in such a weird environment that would be so not natural yeah. in that case to kind of track the response oh well, that's in intriguing and it depends on like so much so much of musical response is interpretive is mm. doing that extra kind of cognitive work that you can't really we don't have the at least i don't think have the um technology to really trace in any way other than saying like what did you, like having a survey or something like that yeah how did you feel how did you self-reported feel? outcomes yeah, yeah. so there's All right. That. Speaking of feel, which animal is better at keeping a beat, monkeys or birds? What is the answer? It is birds. Most people birds. had that, right? Yes. Yeah. So four to one, ninety-nine percent to betting. So you got your one point zero one to one. <laughs> I, need, I need a better question. I mean, would you have thought these ahead of time would be this lopsided, or I mean, it's um, hard to predict ahead of time? It really it is because really I don't know. I didn't know who who the people would be showing up and like. Some of these I thought were like kind of tricky, like the mobile games one I thought was kind of a trick question. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so there's actually, I kind of, there is more recent studies that show that quite a few monkeys can sort of entrain to a beat in some way. And so entrainment requires not just sort of like an audible perception of a beat in some way where you can kind of see in the auditory cortex that like stuff is happening, but that maybe they're also maybe bobbing along, which is what we've seen birds do in a lot of those sort of viral videos. But um, even like birds aren't actually that good as the viral videos tell you. And monkeys, so monkeys are actually better than we think and, and birds are not as good as we think, but birds are very good. And there's a kind of a theory, there's also, oh, what other animals? Like sea lions are really good. <laughs> um, and there's, there's evidence that animals that have any, like a lot of, vocal auditory learning in their lives that are that is important in a rhythmic kind of way which many monkeys do but maybe it's not um rhythmically so important like birds have a lot of rhythmically important like bird song has rhythm like particular rhythms so any kind of learning that happens where particular rhythms are in patterns like vocal vocal particularly patterns are learned mm -hmm. by an animal then they say that that is kind of an indicator that they may be able to entrain to a beat. But it is a very rare, compared to other like very high, what you would think is very high level cognitive things that like chimpanzees can do and other animals can do and like recognizing yourself in a mirror, like in training to a beat is very complex. I mean, so, so you describe that as a learning scenario, but some mm -hmm. of that is like that mating calls are intrinsic to the, like an evolutionary selection pressure, right? Like some of this has to be written into DNA at some degree. Is, yeah. Is that, I mean, birds as a species communicate much more by that means than like yeah. a, a primate would. I mean, everything comes down to mating, right? That's like, true. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you're gonna simplify it. <laughs> I mean. Most of everything, yeah. Yeah. Biological evolution. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so. I like it. Uh, quite a few videos of birds hopping and bobbing their heads. Yeah, that's, I mean. And but, but that's biased too. Like you, you said, our perception of yeah. birds being good at it is probably biased by seeing those videos. Biased and like the fact that, and, and you can train birds to do that. Like they don't often start out that good. Like that one, like cockatoo was like really good. Um, but there's also evidence that birds, um, more than other animals, and may, I don't know, maybe this is old news now, and maybe it has changed. Um, can also have a, a particular kind of metrical perception. So you'll, if you, if you play them a piece of music and you get them to kind of bob along to a beat, if it go, and you, you make it go faster, so they're, they're keeping track, so you can keep. If it goes too fast, they won't stop, they'll, they'll go to like a hypermeter kind of beat, like the slower beat, like one per measure instead oh, of two skip. per huh. measure. So they'll do that, huh, which is fun. really interesting. And a lot of other like um, animals, I think, don't kind of, kind of don't do that, don't f kind of follow it in that way. So they have like a set, maybe not a sense of meter in that way, but like a kind of mechanism somewhere there that's kind of really interesting that humans do, it's like humans and birds, that kind of thing. 
I, I just love that there's somebody out there playing different beats for birds, just like <laughs> monitoring behavior and statistically. Beats for birds. Yeah, like that's, <laughs> that's my album. I mean, I mean, in their defense, we have about a million monkeys playing trombone champ right now. I so. know. <laughs> we, we, we have this data set for human beings, which is pretty fun. <laughs> Lone Mountain Knife Company, welcome to the stream. Sounds of Nature. You guys should check out Lone Mountain Knife Company. Uh, uh, blacksmith, I, th I think is what you'd go by. Um, cool. What's the actual description? I think it was a knife smith or bladesmith is the terminology they use. But yeah, <laughs> believe it or not, Twitch is beyond Blades. video games. Not only is it science discussion while watching Journey, <laughs> but also people doing things like blacksmithing on stream. So check out. Uh, <laughs> check That's out, awesome. Check out, uh, yeah, Lone Mountain Knife Company. Subset of blacksmithing. That's awesome. <laughs> Yeah. Awesome. Well, that's one of the things. Like, I, I love expertise outside of my own. It's just, it's just that's what yeah, you learn the most, right? Exactly. You, you gain the most knowledge. Speaking of which, so there's, I mean, in my field, I, I'm a chemist. Obviously, I care about atoms. Mm -hmm. Like, there are certain things I want every human on Earth to understand about chemistry. Like, a, you're not an expert in chemistry, but I want you to know that, like, atoms, right? There are proton, neutrons, electrons. Yeah. There's elements on the periodic table, and you mix and match those. Those are the composition of everything. Right, just putting yeah. those together in specific ways. If you had to summarize what you want people to know about music theory, I mean, Ooh. actual like foundational knowledge of music theory, what would be your one or two sentences? I want everyone to kind of know or appreciate or, or appreciate. understand. <laughs> no pressure. Um, I would say that I really want people to, oh, this, I don't want this to sound negative. <laughs> um, I mean, there are certain assumptions about what musical complexity is, what it, what it means to be a good piece of music. And I think that I, I wish that everyone could understand that the music that they like mm -hmm. um, is the same as a good piece of music. <laughs> like I there's no sort of music theory rule that like like Haydn, Mozart and Beethoven for instance were these great geniuses and that they had the most sort of complex sort of music and certain and like Bach like was the god of music and had certain complexities in these fugues that seem so like almost mathematically like very very intricate in certain ways and kind of challenge music theory in interesting ways and can be analyzed. Um, and just because something, um, maybe you listen to just like ambient music while you're working or something and you enjoy that, like that's also interesting and good and complex. Like there's, I, I, I guess I want people to kind of res not respect them, <laughs> respect themselves no, to kind of like, have an appreciation and realize that music theory is not trying to tell you how how to make good music, how to um, like who who has the best music or something, but that we are trying to account for human experience, a lot of which is very musical. And so um, I love being able to teach music that's not the traditional music theory stuff. And I love when students bring in music that it's like, I don't actually know how to analyze this. Let's work together because mm -hmm. music theory hasn't accounted for this yet, but it should. And it should be accounting for things like certain pop music and like hip hop and things that are like more new, new genres and not just doing classical music. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, that wasn't two seconds, uh, two, two <laughs> seconds. <laughs> <laughs> um, Cause I get, get on my soapbox so fast. Yeah, um, I mean, it's under, I, pu I put but, you on the hot seat for that question. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, it's just sort of like, yeah, like, like music, there's no real like good and bad music, at least that music theory is trying to account for and you can be a great composer and know no music theory and music theory can open up your world in terms of um, understanding music appreciating it composing it whatever you would like like I think it's it should be a little bit more like a less scary kind of feel I think it, it's scary to a lot of people I mean, what's intense to me about that, and I've read about this, there, there are you know certain people that feel music and they have to respond and they have to dance. And there's there's a mm -hmm. good portion of the population. I'm not one of those people. <laughs> like I don't, I never feel the need to dance or have a rhythm or anything. But I love the shit out of like rock opera style, like okay, Queen yeah. and Meatloaf and My Chemical Romance. Right. And, like it just the complexity, the layering of it, like Lynn Miranda Manuel, like mm -hmm. what he does when he 
groups things that I don't know why that speaks to me. And it's yeah. not on a visceral level necessarily. It's something yeah. different. And so I, I really appreciate, I mean, if I had to summarize what you said, don't be as judgmental of music as you <laughs> instinctively <laughs> are, because it doesn't yeah. matter. It's a subjective experience. Yeah, right? and I think, because I think a lot of kind of traditional music theory, the way we sort of teach it, even if we don't say that directly, it's saying, here's the music worth analyzing. And it's maybe <laughs> nothing you've ever listened to before or played even. Um, sometimes we don't even, anal like we don't analyze a lot of wind band music. And a lot of people sort of grow up in, in playing marching band stuff. And so like, it's, it's sort of like, music theory may, you know, we're, we're all kind of working in music studies to account for a broader range of musical experience, even neg like stuff that you hate. Yeah. Um, I don't know if Dana is still here, but like I, I, I borrowed one of her kinds of first day questions, which is not just to ask students, what's your like favorite music or what are you playing right now? But like, what is music you really don't like? <laughs> and I love that because yeah. it really gets a conversation going. People seem to be passionate about stuff they really don't like. Um, and then- <laughs> and definitely then, vocalize it. Yeah, and especially we can, on we the can internet. talk about it. Like yeah. that's still a reaction to music that's meaningful. So why are we not like accounting for that too? So, hmm. yeah. That's fun. I should do that in the sciences. <laughs> well, what science What's topics do you hate? Favorite particle. I mean, one, one of my <laughs> yeah. one of my favorite things to do in the sciences is to get an appreciation of like the elegance and simplicity and beauty and how it's like universally applicable to things you don't necessarily know. So, yeah, <laughs> we, we yeah. are we are trying to we have the same goals in different domains. Yeah, yeah, sure. like just kind of breaking those assumptions, and I'm sure that now now that like kind of there's so much media popular media that is consumed by students maybe before they hit college like mm -hmm. on YouTube or TikTok or something that might be edutainment in some way I wonder like what kinds of misconceptions folks are coming in with science like from like maybe popular science things there's yeah. plenty of music theory misconceptions but I always wonder how scientists sort of deal with that because there's I, a lot of that, I bet. I mean, so one of our standard questions we ask, and it's, uh, what is the Earth is flat slash anti-vax equivalent in your field? Because mm. there's certain just dogmatic <laughs> things people believe to be true. But I could ask you the same thing. Is there yeah. there's some like claimed universal truths in music theory that aren't actually true? Yes, or, the, that, the fact that music is a universal language. <laughs> that is something that comes up all the time. Oh, that's interesting. And I understand, so it's not, so I understand the impetus and like the reason for saying that. And I understand that it's sort of like, well, music seems to transcend certain linguistic barriers. Like you can sort of dance with someone and without understanding what they're saying and sort of communicate in these ways. Mm -hmm. But a lot of um, a lot of times that's used in this overly simplistic way that then kind of erases some of the really interesting cultural idiosyncrasies um, that still exist in our quite globalized world. I mean, we have a, you know, a globalized music industry with a lot of pop music that like everyone kind of listens to. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a lot of, you know, like cultural, traditional music, folk music, things like this, that if we are to say music is a universal language, uh, then we might have, okay, our music theory can kind of account for all of these things. And that's when you get into these problems where you're like, oh, this music isn't very good or complex because it it just has percussion. It doesn't have any like harmonies or something mm. like this. But then you're not kind of accounting for in that way that maybe the percussion is acting the way a harmony might in a different piece or something in a different culture. And so there are these kinds of interesting differences and different ways of accounting for these sorts of things and communicative properties of music that do kind of overlap with language too. That that kind of saying and that phrase make us kind of kind of gloss over in ways that can actually be problematic in a lot of ways. So yeah, that's why we don't like that so much. I mean, that's fair. <laughs> I mean, yeah, like Mongolian throat singing is not for everyone. <laughs> it's not. I love it. <laughs> it's for me. I'll yeah, do it yeah. right now. No, I can't. No, I can't do it. I've, I've tried. Trombone champ, not yeah, for everyone. Not for <laughs> But maybe game of the year. Yeah. We'll see. What game happens. of the year. It'll it'll like it'll take out genital jousting. Yeah. For once. That's really fun. <laughs> <laughs> Musicologist, a lot of general distrust of academia. The ivory tower image. Yeah, we talked about that earlier. Was, yeah. I mean, that's half the reason I do this stream. Let's let's knock down that ivory tower. Let's right. let's yeah. blur lines between disciplines. Mm-hmm.
All right, we're yeah. at ten twelve. We should do another prediction. This one is going to be a uh, personal question about Julian. <laughs> like silly. Are you guys ready? There's no way you can possibly know this answer. If I get a 99% and a 1% in this one, I'm going to be like, what? How many gaming systems does Julianne own? Is it less than 15 or greater than 15? <laughs> Keep in mind, this is both her hobby and her profession. So, I mean, answers could vary dramatically. <laughs> what, Based on what you've seen of her playing Final Fantasy 2 slash 4 mm -hmm. and Journey, what do you know about how many gaming yeah. systems she owns? Uh, with music scholars, there's a really strong sense of not being able to read music being a huge barrier to what we do. Yeah. Um, and we try to make a lot of our articles and chapters be, um, you know, you don't need to read the music. We don't have to have a transcription of the score in there. Um, I do, at least. Um, but there is a there is sort of a lot of assumptions from a lot of folks outside especially in other humanities where we're kind of intermingling a little bit more naturally. Mm -hmm. um, they're like, well, we can't talk about music because we can't read it. I'm like, you know, you... I mean, it's a, it's a tool. It's a good, it's a nice tool to have, mm -hmm. but it's not the only tool. Oh, we need clarification on this question. Cuddle Puppy wants to know, does a Samsung smart fridge count as a game system? <laughs> <laughs> can, can, can you play Doom on it? <laughs> if yes, we'll count it. <laughs> And you can play Doom on it. <laughs> you can play Doom on a pregnancy test, apparently. What? That's, I don't know if you saw this meme no. where people were just trying to play Doom on every single electronic like thing they that, could. Like, yeah, anything that has an LCD screen, theoretically. What a game! <laughs> a pregnancy test. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but like, TI-85 calculator you can. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, so... I respect that. <laughs> the digital ones, yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, the Internet of Things. It's like, ah, like the gamification it. of everything. Millions of monkeys that can't keep a beat <laughs> typing on. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so it goes. Uh -huh. Download Mario to their graphing calculators. Yeah, now it's in um, uh, Minecraft, where you can program anything you want, oh, including yeah. Doom. All right, the question is, how many gaming systems does Julianne own? The answer is... What did people say? Oh, uh, okay. I'll give you the numbers. The Back. answer... 50-50 split. 50. Yeah. Um, it's less than 15 because a lot of them were my sisters or my brothers, and we didn't... That's fair. <laughs> Some of them I took... Um, or, and I, I do... I got a gaming PC from UT Austin, and it still says property of UT Austin, but I took it to Florida. I shouldn't be saying this. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I'll, I'll cut that from the video. <laughs> I'll give it back one day. Um, if but, UT uh, Austin purchasing happens to be one of the dozens of viewers of this video, I'll be impressed. It's like one they of my journey it. fans. <laughs> um, yeah, they're like on this, and then they give up. Um, mm. But yeah, they... Uh, yeah, so, I mean, it was a little bit... Like, I ha I've... I, have in my house probably more than 15. I do not have any smart fridges. I don't like smart devices. Oh I, my God. they terrify me yeah. and I'm afraid of like surveillance and I'm like, I'm very paranoid. Yeah, <laughs> about I, I will not hook up my TV to the internet. Yes, like, like smart TVs. I think yeah. smart TVs are now cheaper than dumb TVs for yeah. that reason. Well, because they can advertise and steal your data. Because they can advertise they and steal your, your data. So that's what they're, that's where the money is coming from. Yeah. So we keep, I have this old dumb TV and I'm like, I just hope it never dies because wow. I, gotta keep it well you can you can get the smart tv as long as you don't hook it up to the internet it right. should be fine yeah but we just we literally got the 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 nook like the tiny computer and yeah we that hooked up yeah because then you could do ad block and filtering and that's good yeah but yeah so the answer for those that are curious 13 the list is nes n64 switch sega genesis playstation 1 2 3 4 xbox 360 game boy pocket game boy color nintendo ds and nintendo 3 those DS. are the ones that are exclusively mine and i haven't stolen from my brother yet um <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> he's got the wii so like he had the wii and the gamecube and like yeah so um siblings man and my parents so i had the nes because princeton bought it for me as i mentioned earlier but my parents actually owned the NES. They bought it for themselves originally. And they would put us to bed um, and play Super Mario, like co-op, um, after we were asleep. <laughs> um, so I like kind of, I guess, luckily, I mean, you know, a lot of people grow up with parents that are really anti-video games. Mm -hmm. um, and they don't really start playing video games until they get older. But my parents were, they kind of recognized that 
like me and my sister, we were we were learning to read from a lot mm-hmm. of these games, yeah, like yeah. the RPGs and stuff. Yep. We were um, we were still like playing outside and stuff and like doing the kids stuff, but we. Um, they kind of saw it as a form of enrichment, and we didn't have any really violent games. Now that, like, you know, at that point, nothing's that graphic anyway. So, um, yeah, I was lucky in that way. That Careful, they let we're me. about ten minutes away from Narc. <laughs> Mom, <laughs> don't watch. <laughs> yeah, I think Journey is the least violent of yeah. any game I've ever played. I don't think you can even <laughs> wait until you play Trombone Champ. <laughs> That's the, that's the most violent. <laughs> it's going to set off all the rated M for mature. <laughs> What's Is there an above mature? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't uh, know. <laughs> I'm not joking when I say I learned to drive by playing Grand Theft Auto. I mean, the rules are there, right? Yeah. It's not fully submersive. Wall, Wally Boot would like to talk to you about that. That's what his research is, driving, oh, driving cool. stimulators. So, yeah. yeah. It's intriguing. I'd have to ask my husband how many consoles we own. And they add up quickly. Yeah, I had to really think about it. I'm like, I have no idea. Um, And I forgot about the Game Boys for a second, so I had to add them in. Um, But I I have a Game Boy... um, What was that called? Oh, the Game Game Boy Camera. Like, remember that? (laughs) You still have that? And I still have it, and I filled up I filled up the 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 pictures like like on the bus in fifth grade, and I still have it, and I still occasionally look at those pictures. Do you have the printer that went with it? And I don't have the printer. (laughs) My parents wouldn't buy the printer. I was like, give me the printer. They're they're like, what are you doing? (laughs) What is this? Wow. So you can get one of those on... 164 dollars and Yeah, eBay if you want a Game Boy camera. Not as bad as... I'll, I'll ask FSU for research. My oh, archival like research. What is that guy? Okay. Camera. Yeah. Yeah, some of them are cheaper. 50 bucks. Oh, okay. It's pretty terrible, though. Yeah. <laughs> the image is quality. I mean, yeah, great. but I mean, it's, it's again, it's, it's for, the the, first for the archive. <laughs> yeah. It was such a cool concept. It was such a weird, I don't know if anybody remembers, there'd be random screens with random people's faces and weird sounds that had nothing to do with any of the gameplay. Like, this was just a camera. Like, it was such a bizarre, like, there needs to be, like, an oral history article about, like, that yeah. game. Like, the game, the, the camera game. I mean, even the accessories themselves. There's some really good YouTube videos, because you have, like, Rob the Robot and the, the, oh, the yeah. power glove, the power Oh, yeah, pad. all the peripheral the, accessories. The, there was the one, um, Nintendo actually worked with uh, the Minnesota lottery system. There was supposed to be a gambling accessory for the Nintendo, <laughs> where you'd actually mount the Nintendo. <laughs> I did not do, know that. Yeah, no, there's, it's crazy. Oh, Just the wild west of what is good mm-hmm. for the internet. I love it. I love it. Like even the Kinect, that didn't last very long. Oh, it was yeah. Like the motion capture stuff. That was cool. There was one game for that. I was I was trying to remember the name of it. But basically, you put your hand out and you would shoot at the screen, but the shooting would be in rhythm to the game. So it wasn't oh. a rhythm based game, but like yeah, I don't know what that the, is. Part of the shooting was part of the experience. And yeah. Like you pulse your hand and it would do a beat and like a rocket shot. It was, oh, cool. It was really fun. But yeah. Next hex and I liked all the dance games. <laughs> I mean, we have the Nintendo Power Pad here, so we oh, can bust yeah. that out next time. <laughs> all right. Presenting Bunt. Sorry I missed it. Thank you for the follow. We appreciate it. If you have any questions, throw them in chat. We are happy to answer them. We're about, I don't know, we got about 40 minutes left. We're 10 minutes away from NARC, so if you guys have any questions before she's fully immersed in the world of drug warfare, <laughs> uh, now is the time to ask them. <laughs> so anything... I missed one from George Jettison earlier when we were talking about the the quadruvium versus the tr- is it trivium. Quadruvium? trivium quadruvium and the trivium. Yeah, is the planet thing where the term music of the spheres? Yes, comes from? that is where it comes from. Music wow. of the spheres because the spheres are the planets, and they all have their special ratios. And like if you had if you had the best the good a good composition, it would like resonate with the with the spheres and it'd be good. I don't know. So, <laughs> when you were born, was impacted by the resonance with Jupiter at some point and stars. And yeah, it's like it's kind of astrology ish. Yeah, like yeah. there's definitely like I'm a Sagittarius, so that's Jupiter. So that's like I think that was the perfect fifth. So like I'm like that's my my uh, that's my interval. I mean, and it's wh- 
perfect. So. Well, what's intriguing about that is there is some reality to these harmonies and interactions of harmonies. So like in chemistry, we have mm -hmm. um, like the classic image of what an atom is, is protons, neutrons, and the electron is orbiting around mm -hmm. it, like a classic planet view. But in reality, that electron is a cloud and that cloud has a wave associated mm -hmm. with it. And so we have something called um, like Schrodinger's equation that basically describes electrons in terms of waves. Mm -hmm. And so when you think about hydrogen bonding with carbon, it's a wave function overlap, which is essentially okay. constructive interference or mm -hmm. harmonies yeah, between yeah. those wave functions. Yeah. And so it's not that detached from that idea. Right. Like I think there was there was still like in that early kind of science era in mm -hmm. Europe at least that this a sense of like things are vibrating. <laughs> and music does that too. And so like there should be some sort of relationship. Yeah. I mean I've I've thought about that in terms of like what does a carbon hydrogen bond sound like? Like if you could translate the frequencies of oscillation of atoms yeah. to an actual audible sound. What is it? Carbon hydrogen sounds different than carbon oxygen. And I, yeah. That should be true. I'm yeah, I know and I had I had a friend who did um who grouped up in grad school with a neuroscientist and like did uh like a translation of certain wave brain waves into oh, into music like as a composition it was super cool like there's so many of those opportunities yeah to do really cool things it's just thinking about it from a different lens yeah yeah but yeah it's underappreciated how often in gen chem i just say like these waves are constructive these waves are destructive mm. and that's everything from x-ray diffraction to yeah <laughs> yeah presenting bunt wait what <laughs> <laughs> you'll have to be more specific on what you're debating right now because <laughs> we are we are crossing boundaries tonight the, 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 the chemist is talking to the music theorist <laughs> we're we're seeing where our, our, our disciplines. Uh, I mean, this, yeah, just the the music of of the atoms, you know. Just heard my handle. Oh yeah, I just I uh, was saying thank you for the follow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, if yeah. You missed that. But, yeah. <laughs> no, we appreciate the follows. We want to increase visibility. Yeah. One of our goals for this uh, stream is to, you know, destigmatize science and and, and uh, the academics and you know our our our. Uh, our symbol is literally yeah. a Nintendo controller with a graduation cap on it. Yeah, so, yeah. Although we're academics, we do love gaming as well. So mm -hmm. thank you for the follow. If you have any questions, throw those in chat. <laughs> Does Julianne need a ride home or what? <laughs> <laughs> That is that is uh, my partner Neil who's coming on to antagonize me. I definitely. Hi. Um, Neil, yeah. welcome to the stream. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've only had half a ranch water. Come on. <laughs> it's a strong ranch water. Four percent alcohol. It is the spicy alcohol. ones. So <laughs> spicy. <do> that. <laughs> spicy. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> but you're still a bunch of nerds. Thank you, Cuddle Puppy. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh we yeah. We embrace it. We we do. Like, how can nerdity get even nerdier? And that's academia. <laughs> <laughs> academia and video games. Oh, God, yeah. I, but w with that said, this Twitch stream plus me playing video games gets me so much street cred with my students. It's like, <laughs> yeah, we're sure, cool too. sure, I'm 40, but I do <laughs> game. Like, I, I understand. I, yeah. I Twitch, so, yeah. Yeah. I'm And I'm, like, really, I'm really sort of happy that there's, like, more of an embracing of mixing gaming and and academia even if it's not like literally studying games but kind of mixing these media and being thinking of these different kinds of public ways of facing that's not just writing a new york times article yeah. or something um but my colleague um imani mosley wrote, recently wrote a really good new york times article about the um the queen's funeral and like what music you would hear Oh, that's um, it was fun. like really, really cool. Um, so there is some public musicology out there, but I'm just like shit posting on Twitch, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, I mean, it's a different venue. It's a different venue. Oh, oh I forgot. I forgot a boss fight. What yes, is you can here? die in this game. Wow. I forgot about this. He, it's getting intense. You need to like hide from him. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you got three minutes. All right. No, I mean we don't have to hardline the stuff. <laughs> Whatever works, you can just cut me off at any time. No worries. This is the scariest part of the game, so. There's no boss music in this one. There's only like an intense surge of sound when the 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 dude is kind of near you. Mm -hmm. 
I might be going backwards, and that's why. No, I can't tell what's happening anymore. Oh, man, I don't think we fulfilled this. Critical Ninja requested a factoid 28 minutes ago. Oh, my gosh. So we, we dove into a lot of things. Oh. Then, then you have a factoid. Oh, I need a factoid. Um, no I did, like, write some down, but, like, I was trying to think of them as I was playing as well. Um, factoids. Something interesting and not just silly. Well, they're all no, silly, right? They can be silly. We don't care. Um, no, this is stupid. Uh, <laughs> I think I've said half of these. Oh, um, well, I kind of, um, I kind of mentioned already how like one of the most prominent sort of or the first. Uh, game sound music history book was written by Karen Collins. A lot of the early academic work was in video game music specifically was done by women. Um, and again, sort of talking about the whole, like in the 90s, I thought only boys played video games and I was like the only person playing Final <laughs> Fantasy, this kind of thing. And um, it's actually like, if you look at the community of people who study video game music, it's pretty like gender balanced. Nice. Um, and also interestingly, one in music, one of the most, um, gender imbalanced fields is conducting like professional conducting but if you look at video game music concerts so many of them are being conducted by women so it's this place it's almost it's interesting how video games in this kind of music sense is almost a place where you, that typical kind of gender imbalance toxicity stuff is not not happening. I mean, we still have a long way to go with other sorts of like diversity. We're very white for for instance, but um it's kind of kind of nice to feel um like there's a reason like I never played any online games like earlier than than right, now. Like so. there's just so much so much toxicity and as soon as you sort of yeah. open your mouth and reveal yourself to sound like sound even close to like female, it's like just a bad time and a bad place. So um, it's really nice to have like at least the academic community, which music theory is actually pretty male dominated, like the most male dominated field out of all the humanities. Oh, interesting. Um, except philosophy, I think it's like tied. Yeah. Um, but like video game music studies is like weirdly like the most welcoming, the most welcoming place in so many ways, so. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Musicologists following up with uh, uh, Capcom and Konami in the 80s had a lot of women composers. Yes, a lot of early women. And like it kind of follows this trend that we're seeing where we're discovering a lot of women in early tech, you know, mm -hmm. early computer science, early like NASA stuff. like, And, you know, these sort of lost kind of women and hopefully these won't get lost. Um, but there's been more, more resurgence of trying to get interviews with them. Um, translate them into English, these early Capcom composers and um, that are the all pretty much all Japanese and like how that was just very female dominated back then. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. All right, we're at the 1030 mark. Are all you right. ready for it? <laughs> no, <laughs> just say no. No, no. no one ever is. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, those of you not familiar with the stream, Ask a Scientist Gaming, we close every night with this 1989 game for the NES called NARC. Um, basically, we want to win the war on drugs every single or every we other are week. Winning. So We are undefeated. Here it comes, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to beat at least Old. one game tonight, and that game is going to be NARC. <laughs> Uh, also that's, worth a, note. that's pretty far that I got in Journey. I th pretty th thought I was just never going to get past the opening. No. All oh, right, look at this. Big screen. There we go. Look at that. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen. So this is NARC. Um, yeah, this was written and coded by Nancy Reagan in the 1980s. <laughs> just kidding. None of that's true. <laughs> I mean, basically. Don't trust any factoid we say on the screen. <laughs> but here it is. Julianne, are you ready? You're competing against your colleagues Oh, my God, there's a timer. That's yep. so rude. Okay. <laughs> so much. Do you not want to see it? I can put it over put here. It up, put it over somewhere. <laughs> All right, we'll put it over here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? Go ahead and press start. It is game time. <laughs> I just like that it's called. Please soundtrack. critique this soundtrack in real time. Has anyone so rage quit crazy. out of NARC? Um, Steve Leonard did the first time he played. Not rage quit, <laughs> but he couldn't get the jump rocket at the end. So, yeah. All right. So, during our NARC gameplay, we should uh, do another prediction. Let's do the Ravel's Bolero. Bolero, yeah. yeah. Let's do that. Actually, I'll play that a little bit in the background. You feel the bass beat. <laughs> is, there, is there anything happening but me just shooting 
<laughs> These sad people. Oh, okay. Yeah, walk right, find things on the ground, like... So that red card you want to pick up. Right, Are well. these drugs? Am I collecting the drugs? You oh are. my god, these dogs. <laughs> I don't want to hurt you. <laughs> cane on the ground. I gotta crouch and hurt them. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh my god. Oh my god. California. That's where the drugs are. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have a prediction we're going to be popping up on the screen shortly. It's fun. We're going to actually do the sample in the background before you guys can make your prediction on this one. Okay. Um, all right, so we're going to give you guys two minutes two minutes on this one. So, Ravel's Borla Bolero mm -hmm. was originally used as the title screen for one of these games before the original soundtrack was composed. Was it Final Fantasy or Legend of Zelda? I'm going to play this in the background so you guys can hear it. Hopefully it's a little louder than Narc. We can actually see the 8-bit rendition of uh, Bolero by Ravel. So this was used as the original it. title screen song before they composed an original track. Now, was this actually released with the game? No. It was just a, 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 it was a placeholder. placeholder during the programming stage. Mm -hmm. But somebody wrote it in 8-bit. Yeah, is, yeah, they, they did implement it in 8-bit, so it's kind of nice. I mean, it's a really fun, like, rendition of it. Like, you can hear it. Like maybe over the dark background. I'm like, wow, yeah. the music sounds interesting. It's just Rebel. <laughs> <laughs> We're jamming so in <laughs> <laughs> We had our own soundtrack in the stream. Question is, will I get a like a DMAC, a DMCA takedown notice because this? Who owns the rights to <laughs> Rebel's Bolero? That is that is old enough to be in public domain. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. <laughs> All right. Make your predictions was now. Was that was that used as the original placeholder for the title screen for Final Fantasy or Legend of Zelda? Throw your predictions in there now. We'll see how confident you are. <laughs> I can't figure out how to do this on mobile, but I know it. Uh, if you if you can get to your chat box, it should have a predict button somewhere. <laughs> on there, but I apologize. Thank you for watching on mobile. <laughs> That is a fun factoid, too. I'm glad we're dropping this knowledge. Yeah. Box, I was not aware of this. That is a fun. That's like the only fun. Not the only fun thing. Like, <laughs> I don't know why. I was like, it was so hard to think of factoids. I don't know why. I know. I put you on the spot. I'm like, but... everything's complex. Nothing's a factoid in the humanities. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But you can see how they make it fun, like they facilitate such a fun dialogue. Yeah. You get to actually... So you have to shoot the ones wearing black Yeah. at some reasonably Insert close blue range. Card. Okay. Yep. So one of them is going to drop a blue card, so you have Getting to shoot that. them with bullets. If you push both buttons, you can shoot the dog. Yeah, I've been trying to do that but poorly. <laughs> okay. Yeah. The there it is. Oh, there we go. So that is one of the rate limiting steps in the speed run, believe it or not. That's actually random number generated. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it's completely random. Not seeing it, had to switch. Really want to get your points. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it closed, but the answer is Legend of Zelda. You are correct. Yes, it is Legend of Zelda. <laughs> so, spoiler in chat. <laughs> if you guys want to, want to listen to the 8-bit rendition of this, which is really impressive what they could do with their processing power. Yeah. And we talked about this in the previous stream. Basically, every single frame of this stream right now is more information than the entirety of these Nintendo games, which is absolutely <laughs> insane. Yeah, in right. They, exactly. Like Mario is 32 kilobytes. Yeah, and it's nothing. like, how do I? I can't quantify my, the nostalgia in a 32 kilobytes. It just seems wrong. Yeah, you know, <laughs> but it's it's amazing. I mean, and this is something underappreciated in the gaming world. It's not about the best graphics or the best music. It's what you do with what you have. Yeah. Right? Like, some of the most... Like, Celeste is not a super complex game. Right. And there's many examples of that. So you can jump in the car with the B button. So tap B. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you have a tenth of a second to get that jump, and you're going to run it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That's... That's standard mode of operation. It's, it's, it's very rude, and I apologize. It was glorious for about six seconds. I was like, yeah, no. 
Yeah, okay. I need to do a compilation of people <laughs> running that car. Oh my wall. god, that'd be so good. So the speed run, you have to like, memorize this path and do it. And, yeah, yeah, I see. And there's now no I'm way just, you can know that, and I apologize. Look how I'm walking. I'm walking like You're I'm a dumb walking person. The, the <laughs> word is saunter. That's what we've converged on. <laughs> Center of mass does not oh change at all. So you gotta tap to jump over. These are supposed to Wait, be garbage this is cans. A... Yep, you're on. Oh, top. <laughs> I thought it... I really did not perceive that correctly. <laughs> okay. Oh, I, love it. I love it. Oh. I mean, this game is pretty harmless till the last boss, and then it gets annoying. But you know, hopefully, enjoyed the journey along this the This is. I mean, look at me enjoying the journey. All right. Look so, at how I'm walking. So one of our favorite questions to ask on the stream, at least my favorite, and I run the stream, so I get to say that is. <laughs> Um, I watch a lot of movies. Like we've been cord okay. cutters for 15 years, so yeah. that's one of our go-to things. So, you watch movies where you're like, "Oh, that is terrible," or they got that right. Yeah. And so the question is, what TV show or media or movie or whatever gets your discipline right, and what gets it wrong? <laughs> oh man. Well, I mean, one of the the Oscar award-winning <laughs> Amadeus <laughs> in terms of music, oh, generally. It's Accuracy? very, it's very dramatized um, portrayal of the um, rivalry between Mozart and Salieri. Salieri yeah. um, but it is fun. It's a fun movie. Um, there's great storytelling, these, right? These dogs. So oh hold both the up. <laughs> I feel bad though. Um, they do, do you? <laughs> not anymore. Um, they don't. I was thinking of this earlier, and I'm like, is there any? media that portrays a music not a music teacher like k through 12 like mr holland's opus or something mm -hmm. like this but like like a music academic like someone who studies music in some sort of way even in like a not an academic like not in college oh i have to get, get this yeah I'm just like so shooting the car stay on the bottom it'll take you reasonably far this time if you go up you'll get past some bombs so go up higher on the screen <laughs> <laughs> yeah then you're gonna run into a wall. <laughs> <laughs> so you got some. <laughs> All right. Uh, and there's so one of the things is like there's not really a lot of portrayals of a, a lot of. I mean, there's like English professors and like in in media, I guess. A lot, you know, science. I feel like the Big ba Big Bang Theory being like a huge oh, we describe that portrayal as... portrayal of science academia in some way so, so we describe that as uh science blackface actually <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yeah oh my goodness i mean i i i, I would believe it you can, yeah you can understand um, how that would be there's the, just aspects of academia in generally i'm like i feel like that's not right. actually there's a really interesting youtube video that breaks down um it's it's a adorkable misogyny is what they called it as <laughs> is that you can get away with yes. being misogynistic as long as you're an innocent naive whatever nerd yes but it's like it's overt misogyny it's like women mm -hmm. can't do physics and that Big Bang Theory has a lot of that. So, sorry, that's a random diatribe. It track. does. No, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. And mm. I, I like when I when Big Bang Theory kind of started, um, I was like, oh, this is cool. This is different. And then it's it's so misogynistic in yep. the end, and like yeah. a, in a way that like it does try to kind of apologize for itself because um, there's like a kind of reliance on neurodivergence being like. Um, it makes it acceptable. Like, make it acceptable, yeah. but it's like, I know plenty of neurodivergent people that are good people, so you're just not being <laughs> yeah, no, I, very good to women or neurodivergent I, people. Yeah, yeah. I, I will rant. I don't terrifying. watch Big Bang Theory, but it's <laughs> yeah. for those reasons. It's like, you can't just say, this dude's autistic and yeah. you can get away with this shit. Like, yeah, it's, that's it's, not how that works. <laughs> it, it does it does emphasize the like condescending nature of the ivory tower right mm -hmm. like where it's just like you don't know that you're an idiot kind of thing. yeah so. you're just like some rando like who doesn't understand our lives and our like very serious research and it's like mm. yeah ah, gosh. that's that's of course like the music theory youtubers think of this think of me this way <laughs> <laughs> that's fair right, you're gonna go in the last door right there adult books yep for all the adult wow look at all these needs. adult books <laughs> there's all the drugs so you're gonna go right and find a white card but okay, so Amadeus got it wrong just in terms of the actual historical accuracy. Yeah, of it. Um, yeah. In terms of the musical portrayal, where he like walks in and just hears a song and knows it, like he was genuinely. He a was generally like a savant. Of mm -hmm. course, there's there's um, aspects of that. You know, thanks. <laughs> I just started talking and I'm an idiot. Oh, oh Ben, sorry. Ben, ben. Oh no, what happened? Okay. Yeah, you'll just go right? out that door, but don't 
don't do anything. After you get through the door, don't press up anymore. Oh, Immortal Beloved. I haven't, like, there's a lot of things I haven't actually seen. Got Beethoven yeah. wrong. A lot of over dramatization yeah, of that left. Yep. Of, yeah, so Beethoven and also, um, do I have the silver safe card? Yep, you just pick that up. Okay. Um, of deafness, of Beethoven's deafness being, and like this thing that he sort of overcomes, and like the o overcoming porn that like disability people, like that people do with people with disabilities, mm -hmm. always with Beethoven. Um, with Mozart, there's this like uh, the child prodigy um, that like just came out of nowhere and is like this this mystical genius. Well, I mean, he was also from birth, basically, his father yeah. was really training him and like him and his sister. But his um, sister did not get the thing. His sister, his sister had to be a woman yep. eventually, that like had sucks. to hit puberty and stop. Like they yeah. were both very good. And yeah. like they went on tour as kids, like little, the little Mozarts, you know? Mm -hmm. So there's, you know, there, I'm not trying to say that like genius doesn't exist. Well, it's the only one you go left. Maybe it doesn't. I mean, genius is extremely a complicated, yeah, complicated that. cultural but like contingent thing. Um, but I'm not saying like, oh, the mu the music wasn't as good as we think it is. Again, back to the thing where I was saying with like, if the music, if you like the music, the music's good. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think I have. Well, this. I mean, so that scene with the king had to have captured something where they waited for the king to clap before anyone acknowledged it as being good because there was like the social pressure of good. Yeah, you know, like it, I thought it, that was really like a yeah. poignant. It's a, it's of that. dramatization of things yeah. and moments, but it, it did try. I mean, so I think you got the green. Did card. I get? I thought yeah. I didn't get it yet. Okay. Wow. I always ask my students why there are no geniuses from Slo Slovenia, for example. Mm. No, I mean, that's a fair critique. Mm. It should be randomly distributed. Like, why are, Why is it just, like, these Austro-Hungarian Germans from a very specific, from Vienna? Like, like, <laughs> At that like time why is it just yeah. them? Like, oh, wow, it was in the water. It's, like, not really what's happening here. Um, <laughs> that's fair. Yeah. All right, so. so off the top of your head, there's no examples that get it right. No. But plenty that, that, that get it wrong. And a lot that just don't have it. Like, there's just not a lot of representation of, of human, like, the study of the humanities, of music humanities in uh like a, in a like music theory research like that just doesn't really exist um in in media yeah. which it might be like kind of a boring thing but i always think that there's like there's got to be some cool like um dan brown-esque kind yeah. of like well look, the, the example i like is um, like, uh, uh, imitation game for computer science mm. and, and, and uh you know, conveying that World War II, they had it on yeah. that backdrop, but at, at, at its heart, it was computer science yeah, generating yeah, computer right. technology. And yeah, there's just not a lot. We're just not that interesting, I guess. But I think that there's, you know, at least a character would be cool somewhere. I was trying to go in the bank. I'm trying to go to bi in the big bank for 24 <laughs> hours of cash. <laughs> That's all I want. You're trying to win the war on drugs. All right. <laughs> All right. I have all these drugs. I need to give them to the bank for the money. All right, we've got one more prediction and about 15 minutes left. So all it right. is time for the last one. This one's near and dear to my heart because I actually love both of these games. Mm -hmm. All right. If you're not following us, click the follow button. Get your 300 standard internet units so you can gamble on this question. I don't think I can use the word gamble, but we're going to say gamble <laughs> anyway. Maybe you know the answer. You can answer it accordingly. Um, but the question is... There was a game designer um, that basically made a decision that music shouldn't be something that's inert or in the background, but should be actually involved in the gameplay. And the quote that, uh, presumably this is a real quote of mm -hmm. the, the, the programmer, whoever it was, they wanted the game, they wanted the music to heighten the feeling of the game controls. And so the question was, when was this implemented? Was it in Super Mario Brothers or was it in Duke? Or the game designer, when they wanted to implement heightening of the feeling of the game via music, um, was that for Super Mario Brothers or was that for Doom? What a fun question. I do like this. This yeah. this relates to some of my recent research too, because I'm like, what does that mean? Like, what does that really mean for music to be part of the mechanics, like the controls? Like, like how can we kind of think about that rigorously? Yeah. No, that's 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 really fun, and framing this as a experiential yeah. but also like how good were they at achieving their goals mm -hmm. so the answer is heightened feeling of the game who said that was it a designer of super mario brothers or of doom put your predictions in there now 
can follow us if you want your 300 standard internet units. Useless unless you want a factoid or make us drink. Or you want an emote. We don't use our emotes as well, much as we should, but so it goes. <laughs> so you guys have a strong emote game with uh, Bardic Knowledge? We have we have some custom ones. Um, we yeah. have... Uh... We only have a few though. Yeah. Yeah. But we'd like we'd like to design some more. <laughs> so I'm not gonna lie, for us we opened all our emote slots because I just dropped two hundred and fifty dollars on <laughs> give subs. I just nice. we're opening all of them. Let's just do it. <laughs> we, 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 I like we it. said on this day we're gonna do it. <laughs> and so this, yeah. this, this has clearly been an investment of mine. You might as well get all the emotes. I mean, slots I think it's a good that, that is a good and you can write it off on your taxes. It's part of work, right? <laughs> I have not write it off. I, I should have. <laughs> <laughs> and with all these Twitch advertising dollars, this will pay for itself in like 10,000 oh, years. Yeah. <laughs> Look Got at the numbers. Like time. <laughs> 300 hours of streaming is like 7 cents of advertising dollars. All right, so now you're on to Mr. Big. You got to shoot the guy in the wheelchair with a rock. <laughs> so tap A. Oh, tap A and then. Yep. So you have seven frames, roughly a tenth of a second tap. Oh, I see what it is. Okay, it's yeah. very. it's very... Settle. Mm -hmm. That's fickle. Yeah, if you do if you do eight frames, there it doesn't do anything. You do seven, and inchworms off the screen. Perfect. Give give me my gold card. <laughs> oh, dogs eating me. On open Eat. set. Welcome back to the stream. Good to see you. Transcribe the. Yeah, we we still have emote <laughs> slots. Actually, we haven't done our animated emotes at all. Much. I don't know how you can do that, but if anyone has suggestions, throw them in chat, send me an email, whatever. We are curious. Also, if you guys have questions, we have about 10 minutes left before Julian beats uh, Mr. Big and wins the war on <laughs> okay. throats. So if you have any last minute questions about Trying to uh, music guy. theory, about music and video games. Thought I got speaking it. of which, the prediction is done. We have a one to one, but there's a lot of confidence in Super Mario Brothers. What is the actual answer? As a time? Yep. Super Mario Brothers is the winner. Is the winner. Koji Kondo said this, and he was actually composing for Legend of Zelda, the first one, and Super Mario Brothers, the first one, at the same time. And he's like, I, I thought of them differently, fundamentally differently. Oh, that's with Super Mario Brothers. I really wanted it to heighten the feeling of the game controls. I wanted it to sound like you're jumping. It sound like it's in sort of. I think the, I think it's translated as athletic, like the athletic um, theme uh, as the main kind of Super Mario Brothers theme. Um, at least Super Mario World, maybe. Okay, come on. Sorry. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> this guy. No, no, you can focus. So when I think about the Mario Brothers music, a couple things that did brilliantly, and I don't know how many games did this ahead of time, but like Star Power, they changed the music. When time was running out, they changed the music. Mm -hmm. When you were underwater, they changed the music. It had to be one of the earliest ones to do that. Right? Mm -hmm. Like to like. That, that really kind of decision. dynamic music. Yeah. yeah. And with an 8-bit processor, they did that, mm -hmm. which is amazing. Yep, yeah. No, it's really, really so, interesting. And because he was doing Zelda, and he's like, I really wanted that to be kind of a narrative kind of feeling of like the... <laughs> what the hell is this? <laughs> <laughs> the vibe of... <laughs> I like remaining silent until you get to imbibe the big robotic what cabbage. What's happening? So, what? run away from him to the right, oh and you're going to want to go to the top of the screen. I can't run away from this man. Okay, yeah, I need to get like out of so his... So get to the top of the screen, and he can't uh, shoot you. Oh my god. And you're going to okay. turn back, and you have to jump and then rock it on the way down. So tap B and then tap A. So when you're in the oh, air, you have to tap when I'm in the a. air, I have to tap A. Yep. Okay, not jump yeah. over him. So this I was is... in my Mario mode. Okay. <laughs> I see. Is, this is All arguably right. the hardest part of the game. All right. And this is where rage quits happen. All right, nope. <laughs> okay, I get it. Yep. Okay. So, so run away. Watch out for his tongues. <laughs> is that what those are? Yep. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Oh, ladies and gentlemen, if you're just joining us, this is Narc. <laughs> Julian Grasso is answering questions about music oh theory, video games and music while playing Narc and winning the war on drugs. If you have questions, we have about nine minutes of time. You can ask them now. And Super Mario oh, Brothers. Other way now. Okay. God, this yeah. is hard. Okay. I, I jump and then. Yep. But you were close there. That was a, so yeah. if you do a seven frame, it doesn't fire at all. If you do six <laughs> frames, it's a rocket. Oh, God. So I know way too much about this game. And it has to be in the air, right? Yep. 
Yeah. It can't just you, be like you a... have to shoot him in the hat essentially. So go to the top of the screen. His tongues can't hit you. All the way up, yeah, right there. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Ooh, that was very close. Farts, farts. Keep in mind, back in the day, you didn't know these rules. You just oh my like, god, I cannot imagine trying to do shit. this. This is this is NES hard. Yeah. So this is ar hard arguably hard. me and my brother are the world's foremost experts in this game. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason oh there it is. Okay, now you don't have to jump anymore. Just rocket him in the face. Okay, so rocket. Run, okay. The run away to the right. <laughs> okay. Rocket back. I'm not running. I'm sauntering. <laughs> <laughs> Saunter faster. <laughs> But this started out as a joke when I was the guest on this stream, and eventually it oh turned into everybody has to play it. I mean, somebody, this is a good choice. Somebody this... challenged me to speedrun it, and I committed. So my brother's an electrical computer engineer, and he basically deconstructed the game. And oh did, my like, gosh. speedruns and programming and all sorts of shit. So we learned way too much. All right, OpenSet has a question. Might be a little bit off topic. That's what we're going for. If you top the brown note, I'll be impressed. <laughs> 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 Having seen stuff like the box style generative AI that was trained in oh honest God. compositions, are the concerns floating around uh, there with uh, intersection of music composition and these generative things that may, things that many of us might not have heard of? I mean, so they have AI where okay. they fed yeah. all the compositions oh, and the created box. a unique, mm -hmm. yeah, the Google and box Beethoven thing, and, and yeah. So before you answer, it's, you need to use bullets on his vertebrae, and you can't do it at the top of the screen for oh. some reason. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your no problem. insane knowledge. <laughs> I, I coach everyone through it because it's only fair. <laughs> You're not going to figure this out on it. I was First not, time I, I really played wasn't. this on three stream, it took me 38 minutes. So <laughs> I'm not going to punish anyone else as such. Anyway, Bach, ahead. Beethoven, okay. AI, new songs generated from previous knowledge sets. Mm -hmm. uh, um, are there concerns floating around there with the intersection of music composition, these generative things that many... you? So what kind of concerns? I suppose that this is... I mean, I, they're they, certainly they took concerned. our jobs, right? I like mean, a, that's like a... A, or, or like that their sort of like creativity is being kind of automated in some way. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of the, the, the Google doodle that was like a Bach generative thing, yeah. a lot of them were really wrong. Yeah. Uh, like not wrong, but like not stylistic. And a lot of them kind of were like, there were still like issues. Um, and there's there's an interesting thing around Bach is that there's there's always the sense that Bach is like mathematical and like sort of easy to program compared to other maybe other composers because of like the way the mm. fugue works. Yeah, it's often that he's just like the most sort of well theorized. Um, therefore, that we can kind of add that theory into like a program that's kind of generating these things. Um, but nice, go right. Oh, you did it. Killed Mr. Big. Oh my gosh, international. He's like. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> global. <laughs> Do oh, I? Musicologist says they have a factoid about you. A fun fact <laughs> about Julianne. Oh. What? <laughs> Here's my money. So this is civil forfeiture at the level. No due process. You're just stealing this gold. Oh, this, this is good. <laughs> this makes sense to me. I had a thing on my wedding invitation where guests could request a song for the playlist to cocktail our reception and Dr. Grasso here. G given the entirety of video game music available, oh decided the opportunity to troll me instead. <laughs> Gail, Gail, request Gail, Gail from, from Chrono Cross Frost. is what I, what many of us think is the worst RPG battle music that exists. And I, on her wedding get like invite i was like please play this <laughs> <laughs> you, you trolled your entire community i was very serious yeah all right not the worst maybe i mean we'll find out you were at 2403 <laughs> it took me a long time to gather that gold so i have an excel spreadsheet <laughs> okay maybe the worst no, maybe the worst not, not even close 2403 puts okay. you at top 10. Yes, so, but yeah, barely. Out of, I might be out kicked of out soon. 33 guests, you are top 10. Does anyone Keep come back? Mind, and yeah, Steve Leonard own... and Justin Kenham are both. Okay, that was their yeah. second I'll trial around. And I, <laughs> I still haven't done it. My, my original time is down here, 2819. My record time is nine minutes and seven seconds. So that's, and, the, and you're like second place in the world. Yeah, so the, the world record is nine minutes and four seconds. You gotta, you so gotta, you gotta I know, I gotta get back on top of it. I was like trying, of to, it. trying to put my initial <laughs> In the keyboard. That was, yeah. <laughs> like that would work <laughs> yeah. instead of doing it. <laughs> I mean, it's your two options are USA or ass. So it's totally up to you. 
That's true. <laughs> no, I'm I'm being very legitimate here. Because <laughs> they won't remember it anymore. <laughs> <No>, why? <laughs> Rub. Same state. <laughs> Yay, it's me. <laughs> See, I'm the best somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Scoreboard, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Well, that awesome. has been a journey. <laughs> so, it has. <laughs> thank you for joining me. I, I So FSU PR office, uh, Kathleen Hogney was like, oh, have you seen this person in music? And she was like, I was randomly looking at profiles. And I'm like, that is perfect. So, <laughs> yeah. And anyone, Cuddle Puppy can quote me on this. I've said for at least uh, six months to a year, I need somebody that does music theory on. And it just so happens Juliana studies video games and music theory, which was perfect. Yeah. So I really appreciate you joining me on this. It's been a lot of fun. I've learned a lot. Yeah. It's, it's, this was great. I Thank mean, you so much. We had a journey <laughs> through topics. <laughs> we, I think we've the, said a lot of the things. The combination of alcohol and video games and just <laughs> hanging out has been awesome. Always so, good. Always um, good. Yeah, we really appreciate you guys joining us. Yeah. Um, if anyone has suggestions of who we should raid, uh, musicologist, if you have someone, or Julianne, if you have a favorite, we'll... we'll who's right. up right now yeah I don't we'll, know. we'll find somebody maybe a blacksmith yeah. maybe a music theorist who mm. knows um <laughs> but anyway julian it's been a pleasure any yeah. parting words for our audience just say no <laughs> just say <laughs> no <laughs> that's what we learned from tonight <laughs> Uh, i i completely appreciate oh that <laughs> all right we'll, we'll quote that yeah we'll, we'll raid um Nick Wan Data Science is that the that's the name? I Sounds will take cool. a look. Yeah, let's let's look at some data science, some computer programming. <laughs> All the musicians are probably yeah. playing Final Fantasy. I know I'm missing 14. Out. <laughs> I, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Find somebody playing Trombone Champ. Let's write yeah, them. Yeah, I'm sure there's plenty. It's, it I'm counts sure as a are. performance. So. Yeah. <laughs> All right, everyone, thank you for joining us. It's yeah. always a pleasure. Your questions and comments take us down on journeys that we never thought we'd be on. So it's it's always a great time. We enjoy it. Thank you for making us drink and, you know, give factoids and discuss topics outside our expertise. Um, so, yeah, I really enjoy it, Juliana. Thank you again. Yeah. Um, in two weeks, our next guest will be Susan LaTurner, who's one of my colleagues in chemistry. She actually does metal flux growth synthesis, which basically means she takes that's boiling cool. metals and grows crystals out of them, uh, that's which cool. is kind of crazy. So she looks, she's interested in hard metal. materials and quantum sciences and isolating nuclear materials. Yeah. Um, and she, I think she'll be playing Space Invaders. So we're going nice. way back with that. The to the first, original game yeah. that had the first soundtrack First associated soundtrack. with it yeah. so yeah, does she grow healing crystals cuddle puppy don't even get me started i ran to my gen chem class about that but anyway <laughs> <laughs> so it goes uh hopefully we'll see you guys in two yeah. weeks um but until then it's it's always been a pleasure and thank you for joining us at ask a scientist gaming stick around we'll raid somebody we'll figure it out so we'll see you guys later <laughs>